Well, hey there, guys, gals, and non-binary pals, and welcome to the SPL Week 2 of The Road to Worlds. I held up three fingers because I'm bad at counting. Uh, it's Gore, and it's Inbound on the desk to kick off the day. Some exciting smite, not only today, but I think throughout the rest of this weekend. Uh, and really, in my mind, because we talked about this a little bit on, like, Waiting Room yesterday, uh, which, by the way, you should go to youtube.com slash smitepro to, to watch any of that content. But... You know, we got to see some of these teams after their roster changes, but like a week, and even if you count kickoff, two weeks, it's not enough to truly know where these teams are. So I'm excited to see what they have to offer for us this week, today, uh, and of course going up to Sunday. Uh, but inbound, man, I'm just really excited to, to to be hanging around to have you here on the desk as we we jump into this. And very specifically, I guess like some of the the teams today, like I'm looking at, you know, well, I mean, up first, right? Neil Ma joining in, Panda Cat joining back for the Leviathans, like some of those roster changes to see how they solidify is going to be a really fun experiment, I guess. <laughs> I mean, it could be kind of an experiment. Yeah. I mean, roster for changes For them it's like way more serious. For us it can be an experiment. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, roster changes in general are kind of experimental. You don't know if the change is going to work out. And yeah, second week, this is when you're going to start to kind of see like those improvements on stuff that they saw last week that they maybe have to look to improve yeah. on. Uh, a lot of things, you know, we, we saw a lot of games last week. This week we have a, a bunch of new slated games, a bunch of games that we're really excited for today. We got Levi's Hounds, Ravens, Glads. Yeah. That one actually maybe stands out a little more than it, it maybe would have otherwise, right? Like, a lot of people, admittedly, last week wasn't the cleanest week for the Ravens. Make one swap, zap in, bear out. Uh, but Gladiators, despite the first two, I'm going to call it two and a half games up against the Dragons, uh, started to find their footing, you know, win that game three, win game four. Game four specifically is the one to look at. So that, that could be a much more interesting set. Still going to be best of fives all day. Uh, of course, tomorrow we got like the Warriors playing the Leviathans. That's their only matchup. A lot of fun sets for us. Yeah, I think today we have a, definitely just really good matchups. We have Ravens. They did not look too great last week. They ended with the 0-2. They lost to the Levi Levi's. Great team. Levi's have looked really yeah. good so far. And then they lost to the, to the I Warriors. I think it was. It wasn't the Warriors. The Hounds yeah, lost. It was Warriors day one. Was it? Yeah. Zap went 0-8 oh. and 2 on Oh, Warriors. yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so they played a couple better yeah. teams. They didn't look all that great, but there's definitely things to build on. So we have a lot to look forward to in that second set. First set, though, Levi's Hounds. Two roster changes, second week doing this. A lot of them, a lot of things that these teams need to improve on. But a lot of things that they both played and did well last week. Yeah. I'm actually really excited to, because, like you said, not only did they do well last week, because the Warriors, or sorry, the Hounds, I should say here, if we're talking like Ravens conversation, they also lost to the Warriors 3-0. But their 3-0, that was a very good-looking 3-0 for the Hounds. They looked very, very good. Uh, and so I, I'm definitely expecting a lot from them. And I know there's, like, a couple of eggshells that I want to crack as we, we get into the, to, to their discussion. But I think the Leviathans on the other side also deserve uh, a little bit of that credit because, like, this has been a team that, you know, they had to remake, it feels like, a lot of their identity. You go into what was this roster just a year ago, you got Rongyu and Shinto. Those are the only two that are, are still standing from what was and, and seen as, you know, the best team at the end of Season 8 when they won that championship. And so I'm really excited to see what they have, but they've added nothing but big names to the roster, right? Panda Cat, the most recent. Fine OK, of course, the one sitting closest to us there on that shot. But then right next to him, uh, someone that old and new players should know because he's been revered as just one of the best junglers in the world, period. It's adapting. And we got to sit down with Adapting a little bit earlier this week and ask him about this match matchup so we can go ahead and listen in on his thoughts. I think we had a good start to the games and we are playing like really cohesive and as a unit. And then in the games we played today, we were very scattered, very on like different pages, not really following a voice, but everyone kind of making a lot of suggestions at once. And it kind of just made us very dis coordinated. Oh, we're feeling good. I mean, outside of the results today, I think that, you know, we all believe that we can uh, try and secure the number one seed. So just a lot of fighting and I think we're going to win 3-0. I'd say the, yeah, the player to look out for is most likely Coast. Make sure he doesn't feel too comfortable. What I really like, based on, on the way he approaches that, is you can tell that there's still this in inherent knowledge that they are like they're doing well they're doing better but they're not done 
and they, they have improvements still to be made. And I think that kind of insular looking, especially coming from adapting, right? When you have so many people telling you you're the best, you need to have someone, whether it's teammates or yourself, kind of punch you down and be like, hey, man, like, I might be good, but like, I missed a lot of abilities that last game we played or things didn't look so clean in that last set. Like, we got to figure this out and I, I got to clean things up. Yeah. And this entire team has all sorts of players like that across the board. You yeah. think about at all points in the last two years, you look at any one of these players, it's this player's at the top of the at the top of the role. This player's at the top of the role. Fine, okay. Rongyu, Shinto, uh, Panda. All these players have just been standouts through most of their career. So it's kind of just meshing together, trying to figure out, you know, they said a lot of voices were happening in that second set. A lot of comms were happening. Mm -hmm. A lot of calls were being made. And that's going to happen when you have such like confident players, players that really know what they want to do. And so now it's just following the one voice, having one you know, main shot caller. It doesn't even have to be the one through the entire game. You can have it shift. <laughs> you can have wrong you at the beginning and then shifts to final care panda towards the end, whatever it is. But once they get on that same page, I mean, we saw in that, that first set that they had, they looked very, very good. But yeah, the, or I guess it was more the tournament. They looked very, very good. Now, just have to see how they perform in their second set versus the Hounds. And a lot of what this team has got and has had going for them in the past, they still have, right? Adapting great jungler. You've got an amazing mid laner who I'm curious to see what Mifflin's going to say after they came in yesterday for content day. And while we were doing some 5v5s at the start of the day, um, Shinto and Mifflin had like, th there was some, some beef growing and going on. Like Shinto <laughs> had a singular mind, a singular focus, and it was kill Mifflin and make sure he knew it. Uh, and then that kind of ended up reversing. You should go watch the VOD, wherever it ends up being. And then make sure you tune in on Thursdays around noon whenever we have pros come in, whether it's by role or by team. Uh, but the team that the Leviathans are going to be taking on, and one that you can maybe catch on a content day in the future, is going to be the Hounds on the other side. A and again, inbound, this is a team that, you know, if you're looking at grand successes, they probably haven't had as many even individually, right, if you start to slice it up. But when you look at what this team has done, especially considering freshly formed, uh, you consider some of these guys like being having their first year in the SBL for Benny, his second year. Now that Neil's on the team, you've definitely got a little bit more veteran. But for a long time, like Ducky was the most experienced player and by like years at that point. I mean, he had six on everybody else, it felt like. And so now you've got maybe a little bit more leadership behind, you know, Chuckles uh, along with Neil and Ducky. But they managed to do really well in their division in phase one to the point where technically order division, they were like the bottom four tied with the ferryman at one point, but lost the tiebreaker, but were better win loss wise than three teams in the chaos division. And then on top of that, they're the only team that pushed the ferryman who ended up winning masters all the way to five. So they've got that talent and we know it and we've seen it. It's just getting it to come out consistently. 100% we've seen it. They were taking games, not necessarily entire sets, but they were taking games off of every team dating back to uh, last phase. The switch up with Quig to Neil, they lose, I think, a little bit of duo lane strength. I don't think of Neil as a really duo dominant guy yeah. like Quig, but they gain that experience. And when you mm -hmm. get to this world's time, you get to phase two, experience reigns supreme. I mean, we heard it from the Warriors. They went from Jake to genetics and they made that change mostly because of that that shot calling and that experience at Worlds that Genetics has. And just one set in, we've seen so much in just that first set from this Hounds team. They got 3 0'd. They did get 3 0'd, yeah. but there were some really big it's highlight a really moments. Good 3 -0. Yeah, it was a really good 3 0 <laughs> set. And there were some really highlight moments from the Hounds. Clean up a little objective play, mm -hmm. clean up a little bit of that late game, you know, macro. And I think we're looking at a, a good team here. It's actually, I'm wearing my world shirt underneath my sweater right now and, and thinking about it. Like that experience, one thing, you know, right now they're playing in the booths. They've played in these booths. As we get closer to worlds, right, not only is that, that pressure kind of higher because suddenly these games have, have higher stakes than, than some of the regular season, but also you get transported in front of a crowd. And for some guys, like, you know, they've all played in front of a crowd, but like the more you've done it, the more relaxed you are. Neil, guess what? He's done been doing it. <laughs> and I think he's going to be just fine. And, and and we actually, what was it? In season seven, we were talking a lot about like the Neil Ma pep talks. When he won MVP that year, it was because like, man, it, it is because Neil's experience beyond that. And so maybe like you said, I don't know if I, I'd 
I guess maybe I will just say it, like mechanical changes, right? Because like what you're getting from Quig maybe isn't going to be as vocal as Neil, but what you're getting from Neil, as you mentioned, similar to, to what genetics brings to the Warriors, is some of that more late game focused, keep the team in check focus, exactly. <laughs> which is definitely pretty big. And of course, his matchup against Rong Yu, this is going to be a really fun one to watch because Rong Yu, mechanically, is just phenomenal at a lot of supports. Neil Ma, though, because of experience and history, has a lot of those under his belt as well. So this is going to be, uh, I think, like you said, a very team fight, maybe even oriented f game, and it, based on these guys on the screen. Yeah, and th their styles are completely different. We've seen <laughs> Ronnie play like almost a hyper carry support style when he locks in something like Ares or Yemoja. He will play those hyper hyper carry esque gods, mm -hmm. and then you see it to Neil, and Neil's just. I want to take as little farm from my team as possible, get them into good spots, <laughs> make sure my team is able to kind of, you know, carry from each of their positions. And he's really good at enabling his teammates, and that's what Neil brings. But it's just a completely different style. And we zoned in on them. I know we talked about adapting a little bit earlier. I want to talk a, a little maybe about his matchup, because Oath on that side has been a very interesting just point of conversation. It feels like Oath on days, and most days, has just been phenomenal. In the right moments, there have definitely been some some not some sleeper games right the games where i mean we've even gone on record saying like yeah it never felt like oath really got to show up i've seen a thanatos game where we were i, I sat in anticipation for 15 minutes and then by 15 minutes i kind of learned i wasn't going to be getting anything from it and, and it ended i think oh and two didn't have too many flashy plays didn't have too many deaths just didn't do anything and so it's it's getting oath active and i think getting oath in that mindset and i hope that the rest of the team can pull that out of him yeah you're spot on with that this team relies on Oath for that early game, so I want to see him on something that he either gets that Jotun spike or some uh, Soul Eater spike maybe, and then he starts to run the map. Uh, Pigs and Bands have started. Hounds first side, Levi second side. We've got Olo Ban, yeah. Hades Ban for the Hounds. Not too surprising after what we saw last week. And for the Levi's, we have Chernobog, Ganesh. We have just got a fresh patch notes. Uh, we're on 10-10 now. A few changes, oh, yeah. not too, you know, massive changes. A few gods that may be sticking out. We might see, you know, some Ardeo, Cerberus. Some of those characters have seen some buffs. And maybe not a ton of nerfs to the top end gods. We, I think we saw one to Ama, uh, Bog saw a small one. It wasn't game changing nerfs though, so no surprise to see, still see the Bog band uh, by the Levi's. And it's just now, after this next week of scrims, we had roster changes the first week. Second week, we have patch changes. And now it's, what Yemoja. are these top gods looking like? Yemoja locked in for the Hounds after the Ares Ama bans in the uh, the last slot. Honestly, it's really fun to see. And I'm actually curious because one thing we have seen uh, has been up to this point 100% pick man for Chernobog, who's, who's been up there, but also for Pele. Uh, and do you think, like, is this, has this new patch hurt Pele uh, enough that she doesn't belong up there? Or is this... Less a, hey, Pele's not as good, and more a, we can't let wrong you have your mojo. <laughs> it, I think, is a little bit of a, a few things. I think Pele is still very, very strong, but there is so many assassins up. As you see, the, the Levi's have highlighted the set. They actually lock in the set. Kama is still getting hovered. So there's a lot of assassins up that the hounds are, are able to opt into. Uh, but Yamoja caught a, a sneak buff with the Fey Blessed Hoops buff. Uh, it went from 3% max health to 5% max health if who's ever picking up the shield, which Faye was Fey Blessed was dominating the meta, and then it caught a, a, a fat nerf because it was very, very strong. Yeah. And now you're giving a little bit of power back to that item. So now we have to see, is that part of the reason this Yamoja is getting picked? That item, maybe that just exacerbates her strengths? Or is it, there are so many assassins up, mm -hmm. let's just pick this Yamoja, let's lock in this Dominant God, get it away from Ronnie, and then we'll just pick the, the assassin that's left over after all their picks. And admittedly, assassins becoming a hot commodity all of a sudden, not exactly. just because of, uh, like you said, their strength, but when Set and Kamazots get locked in, uh, that assassin pool starts to dwindle a little bit, at least the flexible ones are, right? We've seen Kamazots technically play solo and in jungle. And mid. And in mid. Oh, mid yeah, we've yeah, had yeah, one, yeah, mid one mid game. And then set, we've seen play carry and mid Pick and jungle and solo. And there's probably someone who's run them as support, just not necessarily done so well that I remember it. <laughs> I know that we've seen a roar play. Pele, but that was during a, like a, either a charity event or one of those games that yeah. didn't change the standings yeah. like a few few years ago. Uh, but they go for the Thor, they go for On Her, uh, and so On Her 
first off, getting Coast on anything he can box with always feels like it's going to be good. But Thor, I mean, you had wanted to see something that, in theory, if this goes to Oath, he could be active on early, but it could also end up going over to Ducky. Yeah, it's a good flex pick here. But now we've gotten through all three tops. We highlighted the Thor. It's a little bit of a flex potential. No Pele. So now yeah. Pele is at least going to be either second band or it is not going to be going through, or it's not going to be picked in picks and bands at all. Uh, Thor, really good flex potential. I love the pick. On her, no buffs to on her. Maybe something with his builds changing, but it's just a dominant god for, for Coast, as you said. Something that he can just fight on early. Levi's last pick, the Athena, in the top uh, phase of picks. Athena, more flex potential for this Levi's comp. Zed can go just about anywhere, as you highlighted. Yeah. Cam has got three rolls. Athena's got three, four rolls that yeah, she can go geez. to. So this Levi's <laughs> just have a ton of flex potential it's so far. It's musical chairs, right? You, <laughs> if you keep, it, if yeah. you keep this up, anybody can play anything, and you can see where it, where it all falls true. I do want to ask, because I, I want to let the bands roll through, figure, let these teams figure it out. Uh, do you have, like, is there any one thing that stood out to you in, in like, the, the update on Tuesday that was, like, that's the, that's the big thing? Uh, I would say potential... Guardian solos with the buff to breastplate, it's a little bit cheaper and you have a little bit more mana mm -hmm. sustain in that lane. And then you had buffs to Serb, which was a really, really big buff. Yeah. And it, Ardia. It, yeah, and Ardia. Serb's buff, it, it brought back a little bit of those protections to his two, a little bit of that shred, which really makes him strong when he gets ahead. And then Ardio, as you said, uh, a couple cooldown and uh, just a couple cooldown buffs for her. And whenever you see just any small buff to Ardio, there's always that that worry in the back of your mind that we're going to be going back to a solo Ardeo <laughs> meta because she is just so dominant when she is good. All and from what we've seen, all it takes is just one person. It, 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 all it takes is just one dude to lock it in and do really well, and then suddenly she's back. And then it ruins every other soul laner's <laughs> entire day, entire yeah. week. You get an interview, Fine OK comes out and goes, "Yeah, I guess I gotta play Ardeo again." Oh no. Uh, the bands, though, do end up cycling through. Leviathans get rid of Merlin, something that Q goes to pretty often. That Pele that we've been talking about as well, banned out by the Leviathans. Uh, so she maintains 100%. I was thinking we were about to see her lose it. Freya and Soul on the other side, especially, you know, we're talking about it. I actually have the Fae Bless hoops, but right above that is a power increase on Demonic Grip. So it feels like with Oleron, Freya, Soul, Unless you really, really love Kronos, and, and it's really hard to love you Kronos. You really <laughs> love Kronos. Uh, it feels like that was maybe uh, taken in anticipation. Hercules and Kumba. He got buffed. He got, but like, did he get buffed enough that he is viable? Is that something that like people can actually like run? Wait, and also with the emoji on the team, that has to be a solo pick, right? Well, yeah, one of them would have to go solo. It was a little funky. I didn't What's, think it was actually getting huh? picked in. Oh, uh, mid. I was like, my brain like stalled. Like, wait, huh? Hercules and Jean Kuei solo? What could this be? So th this Hound's comp has now kind of rounded out to this. It's almost like a full dive comp where no one is really going to be peeling. It's going to be, let's get this 5v5 going as quick as, we can, as quick as we can. And let's just stay five man grouped as much as we can. Yeah. Obviously, Thor won't be in in melee range the entire time. He'll look to land in the, in, in the middle of the fight. But... Hounds have a nice rounded out comp, uh, really strong 2v2 and duo on her, Yemoja, a lot of kill potential, some good clear, and we got Oath on that Thor, which is something that I'm glad, you you, yeah. you obviously highlighted, I'm glad that we get to see him on, and I like Hercules as the kind of default um, soul lane pick when some of the top bands are through, Ama's band, no Wukong, no Yorm, so a little bit of their strength might be gone. And with that, it means, you know, Hurt comes through, and we're also seeing this Cerberus. Serves buff a lot. We, we are, we've already said yeah. the Proc Red, <laughs> it is a lot. I'm excited to see what he builds now, and I'm excited to see how this solo lane plays out. Levi's also have mostly a full dive comp, so it's just who 5v5s and, and can dive and survive the dive a little bit better. And honestly, I'm happy you mentioned the Cerberus, and specifically the Prot's reduced, right, being buffed, because, like, Base level, level one, where you don't care about that, and that's not a topic to, to really bite into, uh, it's the same. Top, you're getting four extra per stack, though. So that all of a sudden goes up to a lot more <laughs> than you were reducing before. And the only reason it stands out to me here is that's a really tanky Hound Squad. Like, Yamoja, Thor, Hercules, and Zhang. Like, two of those, even though they aren't tanks in and of themselves, feel really tanky. And the other two are tanks and have a lot of healing with themselves. Exactly. So he's going to be looking to shred those prots, maybe a binding also to even shred more protections. 
And then there's also a lot of healing, like a lot of sneaky healing on their side. Yamoja, Herc, Jean. It's not something you entirely think of where it's just massive teamfight healing. But Yamoja kind of brings through enough <laughs> where just having this value from the serve, the passive, to reduce a lot of that healing and kind of bring it to you. This Levi's comp now has a ton of healing. Set, Gamma, yeah. Serb. So now it's who's building the anti-heal. I actually think healing and anti-heal in general can dictate a lot of these team fights. Will we see an Ankh? Something like that. I, I hope we see an Ankh against the Emoja. If you don't build Ankh against the, the Emoja, a lot of the times you're putting yourself on the back foot really <laughs> easily. So it's a really easy start just to build anti-heal. But I actually think you're going to have to build anti-heals as a Hounds player too into this Levi's comp. Yeah, I mean, Cerberus we've seen like just even slightly suddenly you've got some sustain in, in and of yourself, but Kamazots especially <laughs> can be super frustrating uh, with how well he's done. Knowing that we, we have a little bit versatile though, set Kamazots, those are the only two that really stand out. Like it feels like Athena presumably in support because Cerberus just plays solo a little stronger. Do you like set or Kamazots in the jungle more? Uh, I would prefer Cam in the jungle. I think Set just farms in mid a little bit easier, so that's what I would yeah. take. Well, we'll have to see. Adapting. We got an interview with him earlier. Is he going to be playing the Camazots? And how's it going to look? It's game one of Hounds and Leviathans, and it's J-Mac and Mifflin to kick it off. Yeah, thank you so much, Gore. And inbound over on the desk. That's right, it's J-Mac, it's Mif, and it's Doug here for game number one between the Hounds and the Leviathans. What a game one that we get where Benny Q is already going back to the Jean Kui. Something that he brought out during his kind of debut back on the Valkyries last year. This is a pick they went to a few times. Worked really well for him then. Now going up against the Leviathans, Shinto on his very aggressive style of pick. This assassin mid has kind of been the go-to right now. So curious to see how Benny Q can handle on the Jean Kui. I, I think the mid matchup has uh, some intricacy there. A little bit of nuance that... I'll be excited to see play out through the duration of this game. Jean Kui, of course, gets to stack up some protections passively, just from his passive. And so maybe that all-in potential from Shinto takes a slight hit, his ability to just bully out the enemy laner, not exactly as high against Jean Kui, especially considering all the sustain that Jean Kui has in kit as well. So we'll see. I think Bobby does a really good job on the desk highlighting the the power curve of the Elja Towns. What portion of the game are they aiming for? And when I look at this composition, I'm essentially thinking to myself, and if I'm the shot caller for this team, I'm, I'm communicating it as well. If we're not strong enough and ready and prepared to fight by the time first Stygian Beacon is up, a lot of the strength of this Eldritch Hounds draft starts to peter out a bit. It, it really would be great for their timers if they're capable of stacking up and playing that 5-on-5 five five aggressively around that point. Whereas the Leviathans, I think, ha have a little bit more leeway with, with when they need to play the game. They, they've certainly got potential to find picks throughout the early, thanks to the global presence from Rongyu and the dive potential from both Adapting and Shinto. But their late game scaling is not poor. They've got decent initiation. It's largely a standard composition, only difference is it's not a mage on a mid. Coast taunted back. Early pressure. At least the dual lane does go to the Leviathans. Athena Rom able to get a little bit of a jump on the gun there. Means Neil and Coast. Seeing Benny Q Oath, seeing Oath back on the Thor. This is a pick that he was able to really do some numbers with. Back during his time in the SCC, jumps up in the SPLs, had some huge games on gods, especially gods that have these dunk capabilities. Thor, Thanatos, kind of the ones that come to mind, even Ratatoskr at points. Really can showcase what Oath is capable of on some of these top jungle picks. So I want to keep my eyes on the Oath, especially with his rotations on this Thor, because it feels like it's been a while since we've really seen kind of Thor dominating inside the jungle. It's been a lot of solo Thor, now seeing it kind of back traditionally in the jungle a little bit more often. Curious to see where, where his positioning will be this game. I, I think it, it's a little bit difficult for Oath because he doesn't have a guaranteed gank lane. You could jump on Shinto, but Shinto is largely mobile, and you don't have a standard mage follow-up. Benny Q has to be point blank, and if he if he's from distance, best he's going to do mid-game, card's going to do like 400 damage, whereas if you had like a Kraken or something else, things are a little bit easier for you. Porsche Coast takes a good deal of damage, but returns it to Panicat. Great trade there from the on her. Uh, I imagine if Oath heads anywhere, I would probably send him towards Duo Lane. Just have Desert Fury be that follow up. It's basically a mage ultimate. Coast taunted back again. Still holding on to beads. Impaling against Panicat will keep him away. Benny Q is taking a rather aggressive path through the jungle. Actually walks up to Shinto and adapting in the 1v2. Takes a bit of poke, but on that Jean Kui. And with that Vampire Shroud, able to heal back most, if not all, the damage done to him. And maybe now the benefit of going up against Shinto in this kind of close-range matchup where you think, okay, Mage, sit back, farm no problem. Jean Kui, 
similar in the vein of, of an assassin. Wants to get up in your face and get that damage off. Yeah, but has at least the, the benefit of having healing very early on. So any bit of damage he connects, uh, any bit of damage that he takes, should be able to resustain. So high value trades for Benny going forward. Easier time clearing out. Much faster scaling than set. We'll see that dichotomy, that power curve switch a little bit. There'll be an inflection point around level 12 where Set should have a little bit more potential to get involved in those side lanes. But until then, imagine Benny just has a free time in lane. Not a lot of great answers to him, except for if he were to position a little bit over-aggressive, which Benny is not immune to. A, a bit of an overstep at times. I'll keep my eyes on him going forward. I'm also excited to see the build. We know that a lot of those pseudo-bruiser items are items that Bruiser may just like have got buffs recently, most uh, notably Breastplate of Valor. So could be that Benny decides to slot that in there. We've also seen full damage Jonqui and what that's capable of doing as well, though. So it's, uh, it's basically just up to him. I think I would like to see some Bruiser items, though, considering it's a double assassin composition. You're worried about that global presence from Panda Cat in the team fight. Feels like Breastplate of Valor is in a pretty good spot. I think one thing that catches my eye right away is taking a look over at Shinta, what he's put in for his recipe slot. Typically, it's been bow, gooseberries, and sometimes just support might pick up like a sturdy stew. Now we're seeing a little bit more uh, of the party punch kind of popping in, but seeing it as a mid laner kind of jump in. Ducky able to dash away from Final K's ultimate adapting on the way, but Ducky should be fine as long as he jukes the bats. Does Whoa. get to pick up the push Whoa. on the Final K under the tower. One more tower shot! Will not be enough. He needed the boulder, but he didn't have the shot to get Adapting. it. Adapting. has okay. got the swoop to clear up the kill. And it's the Leviathans on top for first blood. Man, that is tough. First off, Ducky survives far too long. Oath up to the air. Fight, okay. Overstay. That's an easy pickup. Does he have the wall? He does. Puts him on the wrong side of it, so Adapting will make himself scarce here. Ducky survives far too long to be punished there. You've got global presence out of the jungle. You know that adapting is on the right-hand side. I think Oath could have got there much faster. And if he is there, perhaps Ducky lives, maybe not, but it's likely a double kill considering adapting's positioning within that tower. At the end of the day, though, even kill trade, but Oath pushes it a little bit further in their favor by taking away some of that jungle. Neil Ma walks forward, trying to get some pressure up against Panda Cat. Doesn't put any threat on Relics just yet in the duel lane, despite how much back and forth there's been, despite the number of times that Wrong Yu has gotten a Successful taunt to Coast. Been holding on to his beads. Benny Q's still walking up, trying to steal this green buff away from adapting. He's got a lot of damage. He's got Neil Ma standing by. Just enough. Steals out a green buff, denies some farm from the king. Yeah, adapting cannot take that fight on his own, not with the emoji there. So good rotation from Neil Ma to secure that for himself. And Benny is just throwing his weight around in this lane. Shinto doesn't have any way to fight back in. He, he really doesn't have any poke potential here. It's just hang out, farm. And then Chinto's entire impact on the early game is going to happen outside of the mid lane. Can I control mid camps? Can I leverage the assassin mobility to, to grab some sort of neutral farm or get involved in the side lanes? But it seems like Benny isn't overly concerned with poking out Chinto either. It's, I'll clear wave, and I'll seal your buff, and I'm going to do everything you want to do. I'm just going to do it a little bit faster and a little bit safer because of Jean Kui's inherent stats. And so I think Shinto is going to need some bailouts sooner rather than later. This this gold lead is starting to really passively build up for Benny. Experience starting to stack up a bit as well. I believe about a half level as of the six minute mark. Now that wrong use there could change things up a bit, but still certainly does not pose a massive threat to, to Benny. And Ducky gets another pickup, push on to Fino. Keeps putting the HP a little bit lower and lower on the Cerberus. Horse out that leap to try and get some additional healing to himself. And that's kind of mentioned for the Cerberus, maybe the potential resurgence of him now seeing the buff come to that, that ghastly breath. A little bit more prot shred as the late game goes through. So I wonder now if that's even what you would primarily max in the lane, especially because you're going up against Big Porsche Coast. He's fine ultimate for him. Wrong you will make sure to bail out Panda Cat. So seeing how, how Cerberus now kind of potentially pulls his way back in the meta with some of the buffs he got. Yeah, I mean, the, the defense shredder is, is so significant, especially against a frontline composition like the Elder Towns have got. Anything that simplifies your fight for the Leviathans, uh, and it simplifies it in that first person I make contact with should be the first person to die. That's just how defense shred tends to play at the highest level. I think it'll be very significant for the Levi's. And, and when you look at how their initiation will play out outside of Cerberus, 
it really is simple, isn't it? Dash taunt from Rongyu. Fine, okay, shreds defense. Shinto and Panicat and maybe adapting. Probably not adapting. He'll be diving for the most part. Just jump on that first target, that first point of contact. Bobby, though, does highlight that the first point of contact will never be alone for the Elder Towns. It's a five-man dive team. Could be five-man taunts, I suppose. Taunt on it. Oath is good. Gets his B. It's adapting and a chase out. It's a level 10 Thor. Blink from really? adapting, though. Going to be hammered away by Oath. Now Neoma closing in. Adapting. I don't think he realized he's being surrounded by everybody else. Has to hammer away. Jump from adapting. But now he's found out that Neoma standing by in the jungle. Gets a backup from Fine. Okay. Slows down Neil. It's a massive rotation to try and take down Neil Ma, but it's going to pan out just fine for the Leviathan. Another kill for them, but Ducky nearly gets one. Boulder doesn't go towards adapting and heads over to Fine OK instead. And the Elder Towns will lose their support. Criminally slow rotation there from the Hounds, wasn't it? I mean, Oath walks back in. No object permanence. Forgets adapting is there because he can't see him. And then immediately afterward, Neil Ma forced to step up, try and peel out. Does cost him his life, but it feels like Benny could have just been there way faster. It feels like Ducky. Could have got there way faster as well. And those two being such major parts of the team fight, especially at this portion of the game, considering how powerful Benny is right now. Haven't seen his ultimate just yet. I promise you it does a lot of damage. Feels like some of that fight could have been uh, avoided or even potentially swung in favor of the Elder Towns, who are playing a bit trepidatious now around their lead. It still is roughly a 1,000 with the Leviathans pulling ahead a kill. So we're, we're on course for that first Stygian beacon fight, which was the... The hallmark that I set for the Elders Hound success throughout the early game. But that, that unwillingness to fight, I hope, is not a trend. Uh, I can't imagine the Elders Hounds are happy letting the Leviathans walk that far into their jungle and then just walk out for free. I mean, what's wild to me is that Adapting was sitting inside the buff. There were three Eldritch Hounds around that wall, not necessarily fully surrounding Adapting. But somehow Shinto was there before Benny Q when Benny was already in the jungle. It's just didn't entirely make sense as to how Benny Q, who was already there, got beat out in a rotation. But even despite all that, the Elder Towns do have about a 1,000 gold lead up over Leviathans here 10 minutes in. So maybe some of that unwillingness to fight has gone over towards their farm game. It's mid camps, shield and cooldown buffs. Now a fight onto Oath has been brought his Yikes. way. Gets a bailout from Neil for a bit, but swipes in from adapting, and the snipes from Panda Cat are good. Benny Q in the middle of everybody does already expend the ultimate and his beads. And now Vaporish Coast forced to rotate over, but this might already be a losing battle. The stun connects to wrong you. The Desert's Fury are good. And one more spear from Vaporish Coast knocks him down. I'll just hound. Still have a lot left in the tank. Could push a little bit more pressure for it. Green buff taken away. It's the Hounds once more, just caught unaware in the jungle. The Leviathans seem like they're much more willing to take these engagements. Shinto perhaps unhappy with the pace of his lane. Hits that Jotun's Wrath Spike, says I'll take the fights in the jungle, and finds Oath easily. But if the Elder Towns are just grouped up, it just feels like this is a composition right now that, that just wins every fight on the left to center of the map. That said, that trade, not the biggest deal, especially considering Oath is already nursing a pretty significant lead over Adapting. Was two levels just previously, now down to one. Still an alright spot for the Thor. Coast really wants to take a boxing match with Panda Cat, but... Panda's not going to give that opportunity to him, at least not for now. So one and one for both of these hunters here, or one zero, I should say, one kill a pop. The lead still, as far as gold is concerned, for the Eldritch Hounds. Wrong you rotating over. Haven't seen Coast use his beads on a taunt yet. It's the first time he'll do so, but now it's a dunk in by Oath. Gets the beads from Panda Cat. Ooh. Double tap connects. It does a lot of damage. Don't think Panda. Was quite expecting that much return fire from Oath. And now the rotation from Neil Ma. This purple buff under threat. Wrong Yu slammed up against the wall well, by Vaporish Coast. Wrong Yu trying to find a dash path out. Does get it. Snipes from Panda. Get a little bit of damage off, but it's just to keep them away from Wrong Yu. Yeah, Panda Cat was playing dangerous there. Steps around the corner to look at his purple buff. Wall Hammer kills him, fortunately for him. Oath had eyes elsewhere. Wanted to escape after taking away the camp. And rejoins the rest of his team. Stygian beacons up. Leviathan's there in numbers. Benny Q was on the point to start the cap for the Hounds. Still keeps it in favor with him and Neil nearby. But it's three versus two for the time being until Oath makes his rotation in. Leviathan's might just be giving up this first beacon. 
Wrong Yu will step up, at least make sure. Neil Ma, the ever fun part about a Yumoja, can force Wrong Yu to stay off of that point. Does a couple rip tides and helps secure one spot. Ducky pulled back by the from fine. Okay, Shinto nearby, dies in the tower. And there's a full commit to Ducky, but he's got the double push. It's a triple commit for Ducky, and the Leviathans will get their kill. Man, Ducky cannot catch a break. Needs a little bit more help over in that lane. Maybe some more vision could help out a bit as well. Would have spotted out that rotation from Shinto. Can't really stop Wrong Yu. He's going to show up regardless from anywhere on the map, as we just saw. That is tough, though. Ducky's been getting a really good damage off in these fights. He's been surviving for a significant amount of time, considering the odds provided to him in these 2v1s or just previously the 3v1. Oh, nearly able to get there in time as well. It does go up into the air at its own back camps, but unable to find a successful landing spot. Surprised to see. Uh, two surprising facets of the last few minutes. One, the Elder Town's unwilling to force a team fight around the Stygian Beacon. We even saw the Leviathans with numbers advantage show so much respect to the, the combat potential of the Elder Towns that they, they back off in the 3v2. And then secondly, the unwillingness to, to support Ducky on the right side of the map. Fine OK has been leaping aggressively on every other wave. He, he's been diving the tower consistently. Ducky, credit to him and all credit due, has remained even. Uh, despite falling down 0-2 in the lane. Perhaps give him a little bit of help. My man could just have a lead. Just one gank over. Send Final K back to base for one wave. Denies something from the Leviathans. Maybe make it not as worthwhile. Say, oh, well, we finally didn't kill Ducky this time. So now we just leave this lane alone. But Ducky working on Prophetic Cloak. Getting his stacks up. Contagion second slot. So it doesn't have his dedicated magic defense item just yet, but quick taunt from Wrong Yu. Pulls Nyoma out of one. Rotation in from Fine OK to try to slow things down, but Panda Cat's got the snipes on Oath, who dies over at the Gold Fury pit, and right away the Leviathans head towards the Gold Fury. Might be too little too late for Coast. Goes in with the Desert's Fury. Doesn't steal that one away. Now needs to get away because of the taunt in to get the beads from Coast. Jump out, and the Leviathans Surprisingly, with all five, don't go for the chase on the left side, but they do get the Gold Fury. And yeah, the Leviathan's macro is just at a pace right now that the Elgit Hounds have not been able to keep up with. Every time there's been any sort of grouping in the jungle, it's the Leviathan's grouped harder in first. Anytime there's potential for a Gold Fury, it's the Leviathan's there first. Rotations, it's been the Leviathan's every single time. This time it's fine, okay. Making the teleport over to the left hand side because fine, okay, hasn't been pressured in his lane. That's all afforded to him by the, 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 multitude of ganks that have been lotted upon Ducky, I believe three now, full attempts that force those teleports just to get into lane to farm up. So a little bit more global presence from Fine OK, great rotations from Shinto. Benny just continues to push down mid, I believe does knock down that tier one tower, but kill plus gold three plus ADC's beads in exchange for a tier one is a trade the Leviathans would likely take at every given opportunity. The Elgit Hounds, to me, it, it just feels like ha have been playing without confidence for the last few minutes, have not been really leveraging all the potential that they have for invading jungles or forcing fights around Benny, who is incredibly strong right now with that Typhon's Fang power spike. I'd love to see them leverage this Zhongkui. He's in a very good spot. Benny's likely the most lethal man on the map right now, but no fights really happening around him. Now, the Leviathans have been playing everywhere where Benny Q isn't. Are still continuing to do so. Dive in by Shinto. Pops the Kingslayer. Gets beads away from Benny Q with those nearby. All the damage from these spawns are good for Shinto, but he's got to get out of the fight. Fine, okay, goes in. Gets an ultimate on two. Throws him right back in, but the follow up is there for Yikes. Shinto. Skewers do a ton of damage back. And now Oath diving to the back line. He tries Yikes. to go for the hammer, but it gets taunted out by Wrong Yu. Perfect timing for the support of Leviathan's Nets them a second kill in this fight. And maybe a continued re-engage, but with the pillar going net for Vapor's Coast, the Leviathans will take their two kills and head to Pyro. Pyro is the call, but Fine OK is so low, J-Mac. He's not going to be able to create a lot of space here. It's just about confirm and get out, and even then, won't be easy. Instead, rotation towards mid. The battery of your team around these objectives being the ADC, you can generally get an idea of what the Leviathans are thinking, or any team for that matter, based on the positioning of it. And Panda Cat says... Yeah, there's no way. We can't do it. Final K is too low. We already won out in the fight. Let's go ahead and back it up, back to neutral. It is worth noting, though, that that is perhaps the first engagement that is really centered around Benny 
and even then it's a 4v2 for roughly 5 to 6 seconds there. Benny nearly turns it around. I mean, that is immense damage from the Zhang Kui. Oath a little bit late on his own rotation, gets involved much later on. Benny, after he uh, expels all of his demons, doesn't really have all the protections anymore, so easy to knock him down afterward. So the Leviathan's just playing faster again. Ducky's just begging for something at this point. This is the I think, fourth time now that adapting has gone over to the soul laner. And we're past the point where killing the soul laner is an easy feat. Now it actually takes some commitment, but still Ducky's health bar getting chunked away by these bats, by Fine OK on the Stygian, or on this Cerberus, I should say. Just put so much pressure to Ducky. Hasn't really been able to rotate out of lane. He's upgraded his teleport ahead of Fine OK, but has had to use it consistently just to come back to the lane, whereas we saw earlier. Final key used it to go over to the left side, get a kill, immediately go to Gold Fury. Ducky now does go for the Spirit Robe. Gives him a little bit of extra tankiness, especially when he's going up against these more CC heavy gods. ADC's are group J Mac, Pyromancer, the next arena for these two teams to meet at. So Leviathan's with the aggressive positioning once more. Wrong you forward, finds Benny. Benny, half HP, does have the ultimate, uses it now. No. From Final Case, not going to pull anybody back. The snipes, though, are good, and the dot from adapting is enough to find that kill. Oh, from Neil Ma, just to make sure to keep the rest of the team alive. And Leviathan's already done what they need. They've got their one. Maybe they can go for a second, but Atom was on Ducky. He doesn't get his follow up that he was hoping for. Wrong you. He gets to bail himself out. But the Leviathans are much healthier this time, and they've already found their priority pick. Pyromancer should be a foregone conclusion. Best counterplay for Hounds might be just run down the Fury, but really have the positioning for that one either. So instead, it's Pyromancer and one for none. Eldritch Hound's coming up empty-handed here. And having left the Fury available, I'm thinking the Leviathans might just have an easy target for the next bit of aggression. And a cat. Going over left, defend his Tier 1 tower. As Oath has been split pushing a little bit while all the fighting happened in mid. And a cat should be able to save his Tier 1 tower, no problem with the minions, but surprised to see the Leviathans didn't immediately group up. Try and go towards that Fury. You seen that player damage chart? I, I think I'm spotting the issue now. Oath is only at 4,000. He has 400 more damage than Neoma. And Neoma is level 13 on support without a single dedicated damage item. We need to see more from the Thor. A Dunk is doing 400 damage easily on its own. Not, not even taking into account the full combo. The Disruption, Berserker's Barrage, all of it. We just need to see more of it. Because there are so many fights now for the Elgin Towns where members of the Leviathans are making out at 30% HP, 20% HP, 40% here or there. You got global presence from this Thor. He should be able to close those gaps relatively easily. Should be able to find these opportunities on his own. He has really high 1v1 potential right now. If he can catch anyone straggling the jungle with their beads down, should be an easy target. Oath's got to get more done here. It's been very quiet from him. A few times we have seen him try to rotate over to the right side. I mean, we got one successful one-for-one one trade that he had after Ducky died earlier in the game, able to get a pick on Final K, but since then has been late to getting to the right side to help Ducky, late to a team fight, hasn't been able to quite get an ideal target that he was aiming for. So we'll see if Oath can find his turnaround as we start approaching the late game. 21 minutes in, we're starting to near some level 20s, even achieve 20 for Shinto. Can now upgrade his starter item. Ducky dashes nice in. Doesn't get the knockup he was hoping for. Wrong. He finds a triple taunt, but doesn't have the follow up he wants. And instead, it's just a fight around the non existent beacon. I mean, beacon's not even up just yet, but we're already seeing a group up around it. But that is Oath's speed, so now the lack of aggression, I think, warrants it from Oath for the next few minutes while we wait on that one. Ducky taunted back. The Riptide actually saves him. Neil Ma playing very well. Oats up in the sky, dunks down on top of two, but immediately has to go away. Got beads out of Shinto, which is a great start for Oath, but now it's a beads Goodness. out of both the carries. As wrong, he goes into his own death. Final K doesn't pull anybody back. This one second gets pushed under tower, the jump to get him out. And ultimate from Neil Ma will lock in just one. That one is Shinto, and that Shinto is gone. The Eldritch Hounds find their fight back. For all the talk of lack of confidence, it's overconfidence that takes down. The Leviathans, wrong you with that dash taunt. I mean, even if he's hitting five there, he's dying just about instantly. Especially on tower line, considering how healthy the Hounds were. Very dangerous decision. And even Shinto had been forced to disengage just previously. Levi's unwarranted aggression there cost them.
perhaps the biggest objective. Adapting has steel potential, does have ultimate and the bailout from Wrong Yu, who's on the way, but the Eldritch Hounds get the Fire Giant. Can Adapting clean up any of these kills? Coast is still healthy. Wrong Yu goes in, gets a taunt against Coast, but Panda Cat knocks down Ducky, who was zoning the whole time, but it's two in the back line. As Panda Cat finds his own double kill, Final K on the Resurgence dives in, gets ult on two, throws him right to Panda Cat, and he gets walled and hit with a double tap, has to use the beads, and the Aegis, and gets knocked away by Benny Q. Now it's just Final K versus three, and he'll take down one. He might win full it. Full HP, he could just keep this fight going. Benny Q is low, Final K Ooh. finds the high plus, and gets an ultimate away from Benny Q. Stun, the breath is good, Benny Q. Needs to get a heal and he needs to get one fast. Able to get something to help out on Final K. He's just healing everything right back in. No. Gets the stun afterwards. Final Wait, K. Wait, more? Dude. Oh, he's got Shinto back. No wonder he's keeping this one and this party going. Kill for Shinto. Leviathans, they remove the entirety of the Fire Giant buff. I mean, beautiful body block from Final K. That is the strength of Cerberus. Here's the thing. You don't really need a whole lot of damage in kit if you're shredding defense. And so... Cerberus much stronger right now than he was on the previous patch. This is a really tough spot for the Elgit Towns now. That is perhaps the best opportunity they would have been given. Two free picks immediately into a Fire Giant. Couldn't quite find a disengage afterward. An overstay, an overextension from the front line of the Hounds trying to create space around that fire. Isolates individual sections of the team to 2v2 in the front line and a 3v3 in the back. And from there, fine, okay, from full HP. Just not enough threat still alive for the Elgin Towns to knock him down. If Vaporish Coast is dead, Final K is immortal. Uh, that, uh, that's that's all I learned from that last fight. And it's starting to seem like all the frontline of Leviathans might just be immortal if Vaporish Coast is dead. So important to keep that on her alive. Just to shred through these tanks and Levi's. Fortunately for the Hounds, though, having taken the Fire Giant does at least extend their game. Leviathans can't really get a whole lot done in this neutral state. Maybe you knock down a few tier ones, but for the most part, I think we're just spinning our wheels for the next few minutes until Fire Giants back up. Here he goes to Leviathans. Pyromancer to the Hounds in a tier one tower. There's a little bit of extra gold in pocket now for the Leviathans. But still a lot of structures remaining for 25 minutes in, but maybe a lot of that afforded to the pacing of this game where a lot of action has been happening over on that right side of the map. It's a three-man group of the Hounds to the left tier, too, thinking maybe the Leviathans are going to push up, seeing if maybe Panda Cat was going to keep up. The Panda Cat, he took his tier one tower and said, cool, I'm out of here, head over to the Where's other side going? of the map where Oath is going down to tower, gets caught out of position. He's going to try and back and final kick it. No, the snipes from Panda Cat are there. Oath what is going threw on? the hammer into the wall. Final K gets the kill. I don't know what Oath was doing up there. I mean, he was farming up on the right-hand side alone, met up with Fine OK. Fine OK bullies him, uh, as Serb's going to do in that matchup. The pathing afterward, though, a little bit suspect, I think. Oath struggling in the first game of this set. Fortunately for him, not a whole lot can happen, right? I mean, with all the objectives off the map, it's 30 seconds of the grayscale not farming, but it's not 30 seconds of the grayscale watching your team desperately try and defend an objective. So if you if you got to go down for free, he chose a good time to do it. I'm really struggling to find anything good about it. He buys time for Benny and Coast to kill the Titan. Yeah. And Panda Cat kills Titan right oh, after. Oh, you got anyway, it. So maybe that's it. I, genius. I'm not, I'm not sure. But it's Damn, a reset. he must be a genius. We're, back to, <laughs> we're back to neutral now, though. So we approach 27 minutes. 20s online for everybody but supports. They're sitting at that 17 starter items. Almost all of them purchased. Ducky's still waiting to be able to get that blue stone online. Build path for Ducky has been a little bit different than what we're used to seeing for the solo laners. Prophetic Cloak has kind of snuck its way into the build, but Contagion, Spear Robe, and a Wing Blade pick up. Ducky definitely worried about the, the mass amount of slows that everybody on the Leviathans has access to. Yeah, slow immunity as well as additional defense. Keep your eyes on this one, though. Benny in first. Benny Q gets the ultimate, but it's a double relic out of Panda to the sky for the boulder. Connects. Benny Q now picked up, thrown under tower, stunned in place. And a turn and burn is good for Coast to take down Panda. Benny Q will fall one for one. It's Oath dunks in the middle, but finds nobody on the adapting. initial damage. And adapting steps too far forward. It's one more. 
for the Hounds. A 2-1 trade about to make it three because wrong you. He can't get back to the team. Coach shuts him down. The Hounds have three. Benny does it all on his own there. Walks up, finds the multi-man card and says, my ultimate will cost me my life, but I will do as much damage as I can before I fall and does an immense amount of it. From there, Oath, credit where it's due, finally gets involved in that team fight. A good dunk and a wall to separate out the engagement. Keeps adapting down. An easy kill there. So it's the Elch Towns now, a significant advantage going into the Fire Giant. 15 seconds on Panda Cat, 20 seconds on the next ally for the Levi's. It's all up to Fido K and Shinto to slow it down. Well, as the Hounds start to push into the Fire Giant, Fido K is nearby. The Hounds might be able to just take this one for free. Let's take a listen in with the Hounds and see how they react around this fire with Fido K nearby. What are we doing? Yeah, I'll kill, surf, 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 surf. Nice kill, surf. Nice kill, surf. Push. Nice. See, sir. In wall, in wall. He jumped in wall. Set TP, set TP, set TP. Yeah, it's fine though. No relics. I'm Send no beads though. Send doesn't want to. I'm gonna sell me, sell me, sell me. I kill sub eventually. Reset this and kill, I think. No, yes, yes, yes. Reset it. 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 Reset Try and run if you can. I'm dead, I'm dead. You as well. They got too low, like we just have to We do. have to kill them. Yep. <laughs> Mifflin, it's the listening curse that rang from Roll Stars and has now made its way here again. The Eldritch Hounds had everybody in fire. All they had to do was kill Fine, okay, keep Shinto out. They do none of that. They lose four and the Fire Giant to Leviathans. I would never be more tilted than the Hounds. The first thing we hear on listen is, what do we do? The second thing we hear is, kill fine, okay? And nobody's on them except for Ducky chasing out the whole time alone? If you're going to ask, listen, right? Don't ask me, then do something else. Ducky by himself to try and defend. Picked up by fine, okay? And throw it to the Wolves. The Leviathans have turned this game right back around. They've secured game number one here in the best of five. I mean, that is... A crazy end to that game. The pacing of it, the other towns get control of the absolute earliest portions of the match. Since then, let off the gas. Leviathans fight their way back in. A few back and forth engagements into a 70% favored fire giant for the Elgin Towns. The call could have been kill fine, okay, and you get fine, you back up and you're advantage on the next fire giant dance. Or it's coin toss the fire giant and you're still advantage there because fine, okay, is not stealing from you, right? Instead, it's Split the uprights, get wiped, lose fire. I mean, that is, and I say it a lot, I mean it wholeheartedly here, miserable. I, I think he nailed it perfectly, though. It, it's Ducky starts off asking, what do we want to do? And he got his answer. They say, okay, we'll kill Fine, okay. And, and then Ducky you just see the it. constant loop around, and it, it's just Fine, okay, and Ducky taking circles around fire. Fine, okay, still lives, gets out of there. And Leviathan's turned this one. Get the wipe, get the win here in game number one. We'll take it to a quick break. We'll come back for game two.
Well, after one outrageous team fight at the very end, the Leviathans find themselves up 1-0. Uh, but before we get into that inbound, you look uh, a little chilly. The AC has been, like, pumping in here. I got the sweater. You've, you've got the short sleeves. Uh, and I've got good news for you, man. What's the good news? The good news is that you could represent, maybe if you're an insanely biased analyst now that I'm thinking about <laughs> where this is going and what the bit was, uh, you could represent your favorite team by buying maybe one of their hoodies. Uh, or if you just wanted to, like, layer up, I guess you could fit a jersey on probably under the, the button down and have, like, a... Cover that. Yeah, it might. I don't know. It might kind of clash, though, with the colors. But, uh, you know, we can make it work. Actually, it depends on maybe the jersey that you get. Of course, all of that is brought to us by our friends over there at Skulls, where you can pick up jerseys, hoodies, uh, and a whole lot more. If you go to shop.highrezstudios.com slash SPL, shop.smiteproleague.com will also get you there, depending on which one you just feel like typing in. All of that. Uh, very comfortable. Again, I love my Skulls merchandise that I get to wear, the shirts that I have. I actually was wearing one yesterday uh, during our content day with the Leviathans where they came in, played some games, we recorded some videos with them, talked to them for a little bit, did the waiting room, all that fun stuff. Uh, and so I recommend it. And plus, I mean, at this point, you're on the road to Worlds. I've got my World Champion shirt on right now uh, underneath the sweater. And so this is the best time to start picking it up. Get it before there's a rush. Get it early so you can represent and support your favorite team as they make their run towards Worlds and show them how much... I guess how many people out there are rooting for them, especially once we get there, uh, which is what this is all leading towards inbound. Again, it's 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 a long path, and right, but we're in game one, the best of three of the second week of this phase, and the real thing that is standing out to me, at least in this game, um, the the mascot that's like right back there, that guy, three. Oh, I'll go the other way. That guy, uh, he did a lot of work, <laughs> not for the hounds though. Leviathans, their Cerberus, like it just. Fine, okay, didn't seem like he could be stopped. Yeah, I mean, after you look at that first blood that they ended up getting in that solo lane, it was actually really close. Ducky plucked Fine, okay, back into the yeah. tower. Fine got out with maybe 50 health. But a after that first moment where they got that kill into Ducky, it was... The Cerberus was just putting on a show almost the entire game. That Protred, a lot of it wasn't even like the Protred that allowed them to kill a lot easier. I mean, Athena taunt into the, the Serb Protred, a lot of CC, and then a lot of more follow-up. But the anti-heal he provides, the CC, the damage, the utility that God provided from solo lane, I mean, y you can't state it enough how much he actually did on this pick. Yeah, and look, you're going to see this fight, and and maybe for good reason, you're going to see a lot of fights, really, that, that come from either this perspective or this one, which was absolutely wild. A beautiful body block that came from Fine OK into a stun, into some damage. And you think cooldowns, you got a stun, you know, your Benny, you're low, this leap, maybe it's going to do it, doesn't matter, Spit comes back up, bam. It's, it's, it's just as simple as that. And the thing is, is inbound, like, that one was flashy, and I remember I, I looked at you and I said, so I feel like Cerberus is either getting first picked or banned next game after that play, and that's not even including the Fire Giant play that happens just a few minutes later. Yeah, he was doing everything at almost all points. That last fight is one off the back of Final K. And it needs to show how much anti-heal you actually need to pick up into this character. Otherwise, he was full health after some of these fights just from how much he's healing from all around him. So, Serb, is he going to be a, a prow pick, maybe banned? I don't think he's necessarily shown enough to be banned yet, but I do think that he will be, you know, something that we have to th think yeah. about today and kind of the rest of this weekend. Does he come with inherent counter picks that we've seen in the past? We'll get into picks and bans and maybe see where he, he lies priority-wise for the Hounds. But does he come, like, if, if I lock Serb in first, are you immediately thinking, all right, I'm going to get this god, this god, and I'm hopefully getting this god for a third one to, to just shut him down? Or is he kind of, not necessarily untouchable, but a little more malleable because of that? Uh, him, like a lot of other Guardians, struggle to clear a little bit. So if you pick a hyper-clearing solo laner, i.e. Wukong, Ama, stuff like that, just kind of ignore the laning phase and just play to clear and then rotate, Serb can't match you. It's a, it's a struggle that a lot of Guardians have. So... Wukong will be left up. That is something they could opt to do. Herc isn't a, a hyper clear god. He is someone that wants to sit in lane and kind of bully. He yeah. can't do that to Serb. <laughs> Serb just goes, yeah, cool dude. Exactly. I'll heal <laughs> nice. that. I'm a, I'm a good dog. I'm just going to, like, be around. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see what the hounds maybe think of him. If they even think he was the problem or if maybe it was just, hey, you know what? Our draft, like, it was good. It wasn't good into him, specifically. And we saw Fine OK not take a lot of damage. Set as well, set up a ton for the Levi's. So far, kicking things off, it's pretty similar. Oleron, Chernabog, which nothing too crazy out of there. I think Ganesh uh, was up there for the Leviathan, something to ban. 
Admittedly, that Quig really, really liked. Probably that Neil can play super well, too. Set does get banned, though, so if they're trying to isolate problems, Set stood out to them maybe a little bit more than the Cerberus here. Yeah, I mean, Set, also just that first pick, first pickable character, and you yeah. can play, flex him into a bunch of different roles. If you're picking Serb, 99% of the time he's going to solo lane, and you get rid of that set, leaves open a couple of the assassins. Levi's respond with Yemoja, followed up by the Hounds, banning that Ares again. So what, what do we have left open? Alma was banned here, and Ganesh was banned here last yeah. time. And, and that is uh, also Hades, I miss Hades also. Those are the, the next kind of tier of characters. Is Serb gonna be able to reach that upper you know tier after that just that first game where it's maybe the Hounds look to first pick it or even respond in like the second, third pick side? When you're sitting on this first pick side though, I, I think the Emoja pick is really strong, but something that Emoja doesn't do that the Levi's got from their first two picks is that flex potential. As soon as Emoja's locked in, you know exactly where it's going. The Levi's first three picks, as we highlighted, a bunch of flex gods where they can go just about anywhere. Yeah, there was a world where they very easily could have put Athena solo camera jungle set mid and we wouldn't have really been batting too many eyes at it. Maybe not like the, the most optimal if, you, if that's yeah. what you're trying to do. And of course, that's what everyone wants to do here, but it still would work. And admittedly, in the past, we've seen things like that work. So it's not too much. Hades, though, Ama does get banned. Hades suddenly jumps up into the, the first pick. How do you like him over everything else that was available, like the, the Ganesh you were mentioning? I mean, it's an unwinnable laning phase against him. If you lock in Hades, you're nearly guaranteed a winning level one to level like eight-ish. So it's just a free first pick out here. And there's not a ton of, you know, other hugely valuable picks up. Athena sitting here also has some value there, has some flex potential value. The Levi's also did play very, very well around that dash taunt. Uh, no Kama hover yet. Pele opted into. Yeah. We didn't even see a Pele top three last time. Uh, Athena Pele though, that's a really, really nasty dive. If, Ath if Athena just ults the Pele who's diving in, ulting. Very movement speed heavy, very, uh, a lot of damage, very hard to deal with. And that's like that same type of combo we saw with the set Athena. And it may be sometimes even more devastating if you can line it up. Like if you get three people with an Athena taunt and then Pele ults, that's a lot of damage. That, that is gonna have. be a lot. I mean, that's like your ideal world, how many times we see that in this game. Honestly, we, we're probably lucky if we see it more than once, even if we get to see it once, right? So lining those things up might be a little difficult, but Pele, like you said, was in the ninth ban last game. And so getting the priority that at least we were thinking, or I was thinking coming into this week, uh, that she deserves. Thor gets locked back in for the Hounds. Ganesh gets locked in as well. And so they've gotten for a lot more of these quote-unquote power picks that we've seen. And yeah, the, the Thor seems a little iffy here. I, I don't think Oath actually performed all too well on it last yeah. game. He wasn't really making a bunch of plays around the map. There wasn't a ton of follow-up with the Thor. If you think of Herc Thor, there's not uh, an immediate threat when they're both diving, if the Thor's behind. And he, he ended up falling behind in the mid-game. Early yeah. game, he was actually pretty far ahead, and the Hounds actually had a pretty early game lead. Uh, but the Levi's just grouped a little bit faster, took a little bit more quicker team fights. And if they do that again, if they opt to do something like that again, Thor's a difficult to play. Difficult god to play into something like that. I am curious, and, and you know, Frey gets locked in, bans are going to be coming through. I do want to know, though, because we had kind of talked about like Cerberus feeling unkillable, and you had just mentioned that Hades like can just dominate that lane. Is that a matchup where, where now all of a sudden Fine OK is just thinking, all right, where does he go? Like, Does he just pick something like a Yorm to just stay alive, or a Serb to just stay alive? Or is there... Well, never mind, he's not going to get the Cerberus, so that answers at least part of that question, because I was thinking, is Hades a solid enough counter to, to control that. I, I I don't think there's anything you can really pick to mitigate what Hades does. You can pick something to kind of make the laning phase a little bit work for Hades, worse for Hades, something like Hercules who can mess up the wave yeah. and, and also somewhat kind of clear. He also doesn't care too much about Hades' anti-heal. Outside of that, Wukong is always a fine pick into most matchups. Yorm is always a fine pick into most matchups, but you're not picking anything that's going to beat this Hades. Uh, Levi's opt for the Hebo Merlin ban. Yeah. We have one more ban left for the Hounds. Probably looking to target. I mean, it could be another solo lane target. We could see that Yorm, Wukong, maybe. A uh, little bit of flex potential the Levi's still have, so that's always like that tough spot is, what are you looking to ban here? That Pele, if you ban a jungler, just goes mid. They ban the Kama. I like the Kama ban because it also plays both mid jungle. Same with Pele, so it's kind of a double hit. It just makes a lot of sense. 
Also, double taps, maybe a little bit of, or a triple tap, I guess, at that point, a little bit of solo lane. Like, True. And and honestly, it's because when we were talking about it, I was like, you know, it's also fine, okay? Like, he's probably going to pull out some weird thing he played on stream two and a half weeks ago, and it worked really well for him, and, and you're thinking it's the Zhang Kuei. It might be. He likes playing stuff that isn't all too normal, I guess is a, a good way to say it. Because as you highlight, he plays it on stream, and he's like, this feels pretty good. Let me get it in some scrims. Yeah. And if it works out in those scrims, it, it is a very strong pick some of the times. And we've not seen much Zhang other than literally last game where it was played <laughs> mid. So this could easily be like a Zhang solo game. I think it is a pretty tough matchup. Uh, I think Hades will kind of be shoving him under tower for most of it. But Zhang does kind of match what Hades does late game, albeit a little bit you know safer because he's able to maneuver a bit. Yeah, he can run around while he's exactly. throwing all those ghosts out there His instead AOEs. of having to just be in the, the one pillar of agony that Hades has. It's going to be fun to watch. And like you said, it's still kind of flexible, right? We've seen Pele. Freya more is, is like the one that is solidified, right? Like Freya, even though we have technically seen her go in other roles, especially if you go like super historically, she's a carry. So she's probably yep. going over to the long lane. Pele could be mid or jungle. Athena could be support or solo. Zhang Kuei could be mid or solo. So you still have a little bit of flexibility for the Leviathans. This last one uh, will pretty much lock in. And honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if it's an adapting pick. Wouldn't be surprised if it's a Shinto pick. Uh, just feels like those two are the ones that are maybe more on the fence. Kleena and Rom, though, close out the Hounds. And so Hades, you know, you know, Thor, even though maybe we didn't like the performance that it had last time. But Ganesh, the Kleena, the Rom, it feels like a pretty good powerhouse and, and maybe makes up for some of the team fight, which is where we saw the Hounds struggle. And 100%, uh, that team fight was difficult for the Hounds to play into, and I think some of it comes down to the the Onher Yamoja had a difficult time playing in those, a lot of those team fights. Ganesh and Rama have a lot easier time. They can kind of get into the fight with being at a distance, Ganesh with the ult, and yeah. Rama with also his ult. The Hounds comp isn't changing. It is still going to be a mostly dive-oriented comp. They just have a little bit more safety on the back end, and I, I think it rounds out and makes it just a little bit easier to play. Uh, Levi's up for the Mercury last, <laughs> and this should be jungle. We yeah. should be able to kind of fill out the rest of this Levi's comp. They hovered Tsukuyomi for a moment, and I was like, that doesn't help at all. But Mercury, Mercury locks it in. <laughs> but I, I guess, to be fair, there is you know something to be said about Pele and Zhang. If I told you this is Zhang solo Pele mid, you wouldn't be all too surprised. Zhang can... Yeah, no, I'd, I'd believe you. Zhang can also go mid or solo. And if I think about both of these matchups, Pele having to walk up to melee range against the Hades, also having not the greatest clear... Does not sound like a very easy matchup. So I would almost be leaning Zhang solo. Uh, go the Tainted also. Go try to mitigate some of the Hades healing. And then just try to, you know, get to the late game to match him. Now, you know, it, it, this comes... This is getting wonky. And I, I'm sorry for it. But I love wonky. We've got Hades, Thor, and Kleena. All three of those have been solo. Do you see a world where Hades goes not solo? Like, is Benny Q going to pick this up? I, I don't think so. I okay. think Hades needs to be played in solo. I think the same thing with Freya. It's, he could play in another role, mm -hmm. but it doesn't make a ton of sense. It doesn't optimize the comp. I, I think not. Hades should be to solo. And I think Benny also looks really comfortable on Kleena whenever we see him. Yeah. We saw him last week, actually. He was bullying Pegon out of mid lane, actually, <laughs> yeah, under was. the tier two. So I like Benny on, on the cleanup, and I think that's where they should take that. Okay, that's and that was the next question I was going to ask. So getting that, I think if it's not Hades, then it has to be Kleena, yeah. right? Because like that's the only real swap for as well. Maybe for Hades, Kleena, maybe for Hades. But I, I, I'm like where you're putting things as well. <laughs> I think it feels comfortable for him. I, I am curious though. You know, we've seen Athena, we've seen Freya, we've seen the Zhang, although only the once. So maybe we want some more data points as will help with that. Mercury, we have not seen in a while. Golden Gooseberries, that's something that Mercury used to love all the time, especially when it was Golden Bow and it had crit on it, but we forget those dark, dark times of our lives. It feels like this is a time, especially for adapting, that he could really maybe start to lean into this Mercury phase again. Yeah, I think Mercury's early game phase is actually going to be a lot easier. I think the real problem you see when you see Mercury played is Spectral currently with its aura, you know, crit reduction, it is very, very good. And that's the, the main reason we've not seen any Mercury. When he dives in, he wants to one-shot the enemy backline. And you can't do that into a Spectral God. So I'm curious to see what makes this Mercury something to be played. I know it's a very good pick into Ganesh. When Ganesh gets played, drops ult, Mercury just responds with two. He doesn't have to ult, he doesn't have to beads or anything like that. He uses the slow immunity on his two. So I think it's maybe a little bit of a, a counter pick there, but I'm excited to see what adapting does with the Merc. Same, I've always loved watching Mercury and this is gonna be no different. We'll see how it does here as we jump into game two hounds versus Leviathan. We'll see how the Leviathans can now pilot this Mercury for adapting and the Pele once more for Shinto, which has been a crucial pick.
for Leviathan some of their winning sets. It's J-Mac Mifflin and Doug back for game number two. As you get the double assassin mid for both sides of the field. We've seen some teams kind of experiment with it. Keep some mages on the ops in. But this time, Mif, it's the double, double assassin. Yeah, Benny's got a pretty decent matchup history here with Kleena versus Pele mid. I believe he gave Pagon the, the little bro treatment last time he got this exact matchup. Difference was, Pagon went Transcendence first slot, I believe, on the Pele. So, with Soul Eater first slot for Shinto, should make up for some of that sustain disadvantage that Pele will run to, or run into, excuse me, throughout this game. I'm excited, though, for this matchup, especially around the Leviathan's composition. We spent a lot of Game 1 talking about the Eldritch Hounds draft, felt like they had the onus throughout the early game. This time, the Eldritch Hounds do have early game onus, but for a different reason. It's not so much so that their their early game is just that strong. It's that the Leviathans have three, maybe four, depending on how you count it, hyper late game scalers that are just going to be disgusting once they hit that level 20 mark. So the Elder Towns, I think, a little bit more need to get involved, at least throughout the first 10 or so minutes. I'll be keeping my eyes on adapting in particular. Feels like adapting should just fall behind in map presence compared to what a Thor can do. Mercury's output just a little bit lower. But adapting seems to be going for a, a much faster build as well. That's not the standard Golden Blade first slot. Let's just go ahead and farm up. That's probably just going to be a rage. Once again, Shinto going for the party punch here in the mid lane. Now we know that Shinto is apt to be the one to get as much farm as possible, whether it be in lane or also roaming into the jungle, maybe taking some camps away from his team or just going for these camp steals. So seeing him go for it a second time in a row now, maybe lend some of the strengths that came with the buff to the party punch. I believe double the initial power that you, or the initial scaling that you get from it for your physical damage dealers. So maybe trying to see if he can make the most use of this new, newly buffed recipe. Yeah, it, it'll be difficult to do out of mid, uh, but still certainly capable of it. I didn't even take into account, J-Mac, that Gooseberries is your Golden Blade now, so maybe adapting just onto something here. It's going to take a little while for him to stack that up out of the jungle as well, though, so we'll keep our eyes on it. Recipes in a much different spot right now. On, on the previous patch, just felt like it was set in stone. You're either getting Bower, you're getting Gooseberries, and that's it. Nowadays, though, there's a little bit more nuance, a little bit more player expression with these recipes, with some of the other ones catching up in, in relative power. In particular, I, I really do like just about everything. Except for drumstick. I'm still kind of a drumstick hater. It's one of those things, like, you want the benefit of that pass, that 40% now mitigation that you get from that first instance of damage you take. That first instance of damage is going to be, like, a taunt. I mean, we'll hold that for a moment. Ducky. He's able to dive back, get a little bit of healing. Uh, for me, it's not even just that. It's like you also have to be out of combat for it to be able to provide that stack. So it's not like that immediate. And when I'm one of these solars, I want to mitigate that first 40% real quick. Whew. I want it to be any 40%. It's like I walk in, I got one second left on it, I'm going in. All right, cool, big ult's about to hit me. Bam, I get that drumstick, but maybe the less control over it. I think it's the only one we haven't seen so far at the SPL as well. Yeah, and I, I think that is a trend that is likely to continue. Speaking of trends, though, Seems that clean up matchup at a Pele is a trend now. Benny getting the better end of this one. Shinto forced under his tower. Two games in a row now that Benny's gotten a lot of pressure out of the center of the map. Unfortunately for him, that pressure hasn't had a whole lot of macro farm. Both mid camps still available to either team. I think adapting it probably just assumes, oh, it's, it's not there. You know, Shinto's been forced back to back camps. There's no way that they're still available. Cycles through, sees, oh, mid, mid camps are still here. It's able to grab that one pretty easily. I'd love to see a little bit more presence towards that center of the map. I think that was one of the major downfalls of the Algert Hounds in game one was the, the unwillingness to play around Benny who is one of the most consistent players on this team, one of the highest output players as well. I think facilitating him could do you a good deal of good. Or even just rotations over towards dual lane. It feels like Vaporish Coast is on that same tier as Benny, but also Panacats on Freya and you really don't want Freya free casting and free farming. Now, that might be one of my least favorite things, especially when she gets, what, three items online? Then it's definitely no fun. Yeah, playing against Farm Freya and paying rent. Those are my, my yeah. least favorite <laughs> least things. Fa and taxes. The yeah. top three least favorite things to do. But the Elder Towns, last game, didn't really do a whole lot of fighting in the early game. There's a lot of everybody trying to fight Ducky and kill Ducky on the right side of the house just saying, okay, well, hope we can survive until late game. And they are able to get some decent farm. I think it's a 1,000 gold lead from... Essentially, the, the non-fighting that the Hounds were doing in Game 1. 
here, still no kills, so no real leads to, to swing either way just yet, but the Elder Towns, at least where their, their early fighting was, if they were not going to help out Ducky, it was kind of centered around the dual lane a little bit more. Coast and Neil Mob been getting very active over on this side. They have been. This time, though, self banish from Panda Cat makes it just that much more difficult to actually hit pay dirt. You got to burn through two resources. Got to get those beads off. Got to get rid of Valkyrie's discretion. Then maybe Oath makes that rotation over and a dunk it is a death sentence if it connects. So we'll see. That was one of the weaknesses as well, was the, the inability of the Hounds in the previous match to, to burn through those relics. So often, when Oath did get involved, it was, I hit my dunk, oh, beats, unlucky, got a hammer out. So having a Ganesh on your side that has massive threat on relics, or having Ducky, once he starts to get involved in these team fights with that two second fear, another massive threat on relics, should help out Oath, facilitate him through the jungle as well. Leviathans though, I, I think, Perfectly content with the first five minutes of this game. Let's farm up. Dabting's got his rage now. Maybe we get a few stacks on that. Shinto starting to stack up his soul eater. Not a whole lot of, of needing to get things done here for the Leviathans. Their late game team fight is going to be very scary. And so I'm sure they're just aiming for that. And, and kind of speaking about that late game. And this might be my old head, small brain going through, but, you know, I used to see Mercury. <laughs> Thank you, I appreciate it. I see Mercury Freya on the Leviathans. Uh-oh. Early's not necessarily where I would see the strengths go through, but ultimate from wrong you lets adapting get a little bit more involved. Rotation from Ducky might be able to try and turn things around, but Ducky can't find a cutoff path. Doesn't spot adapting, but I see Mercury. I see Freya. Immediately in my mind, I'm thinking Leviathans have the late game comp, uh, but do the Eldritch Hounds also have some of those tools for late game to fight against some of those hyper carries? I think Benny is going to be very important in the late game. His ability to deal damage while being immune to damage while inside the wall is invaluable to the Eldritch Hounds, especially around Gold Fury and Fire Giant dances if we get to that point of the match. Otherwise, Vaporish Coast, of course, being able to deal damage from outside the range of the Leviathans, also pretty important. But as far as just raw scaling and how they're going to stack up, I, I, I heavily favor the Leviathans come late game. The only thing I could see being a, a major concern for the Levi's is that the entirety of their initiation is going to come from Rongyu. The only other thing you're going to see is like maybe an adapting ult to disrupt, but that's just to deliver Rongyu into the back line like we had just seen. Oh, to the sky, dunk on nice. top of two, gets ultimate from Panda Cat and the beads. And Wrong Yu may be left out by him's lonesome oath. Once again, the wall, but a Dharmic Pillar's down by Neil Mod. Spin is there. And first blood for the Hounds and Oath. Great dunk there from Oath. Gets involved, burns away the beads, and gets the ultimate from Panda Cat. So if you can cycle back through in a minute or so, once that uh, cooldown's back and available, maybe Oath can double dip on his efforts in the dual lane. Looked to me like Neil Mod really didn't want to have to use Dharmic Pillars there, but. Ronnie was getting a little bit close to that tower line, so forces out that Ganesh ult just by surviving for as long as he does. Worth noting, though, Ost wall just perfect there. Had Ronnie been allowed to retreat through the upper end of the jungle, I mean, that is a completely washed fight. So great wall placement, great ultimate placement, good bounce back from Oath. So last game we saw the Jean Queen mid, followed by BenEQ, full damage. I think it's Chronos Pendant, Divine Rune, Typhons. Benny? Benny Q. He didn't see him. He uh, kind of tunnel vision to I don't know what, staring at a wall somewhere. Walks into three, loses his beads because of it. But Jean Queen mid, you go for that full damage style, final K. Now in a fight against Ducky. Pops the beads, gets an ultimate from wrong. You walked into the tower line. Do they have the damage skill, Ducky? Is the question. A car dropped on top. Ducky goes back in, but he doesn't have anything else. Sonic boom from adapting. One more in hand is good. But can adapting get out of the tower line wrong you? Wow. Got to hold that one for him. Three health bars at a quarter. You might want to separate because here comes the dunk in by Oath. He gets fine. Okay. Good taunt. But he's taunted back right in. Neil Mog and Benny Q show up and they can make it a one for one. Watch Shinto though. Won't stay one for one for long. Pyroclast takes down Oath. Benny, Neil Ma, both healthy. Benny to the wall. Should secure his escape. But he decides to re-engage and adapting's isolated. Quick dash out from adapting to escape the clutches of Neil Ma and Benny Q, two for one trade at the end for the Leviathans, only losing Fine OK for taking out Oath and Ducky in response. Do you see that tower aggro trade from the Leviathans though, J Mac? I mean, it was just perfect. Fine OK paths in through the bottom end of the tower, tanks up for 
just about as long as possible. Then Rongu cycles aggro, holds onto it for adapting to secure his kill. I mean, just clean team play, good communication from Leviathan's what's nets them that. Ducky once more, I mean, plays it so well. Has the aggression on him, out rotated to the soul lane or the Elgin Towns. Ducky survives for 10 to 15 seconds longer than I think anyone would really expect from him. Just didn't quite have enough follow up from the rest of the Hounds to turn that fight on its head. It was that additional rotation from Shinto that tips the scale just ever so slightly in the Levi's favor. So Leviathans can run away with that fight, name themselves the two kills to the one of the Elder Towns, who did get first blood, but now with those couple of kills, Leviathans, small lead in the gold department, not even quite a thousand just yet for the Leviathans. But what I was gonna at least pose before was maybe some of the build path change for Final Can the Soul Lane. As you mentioned before, some of the bruiser items for the mages, maybe not quite what they used to be. You can't really build damage and defense anymore. But Bob's so, like good. So kinda how do you kinda, you know, swap up the build now as a soul lane Zhang versus a mid? Well, I mean, if I'm going to go off of data-driven analysis, clearly it's lifesteal, right? Pythag's immediately into that Bancroft's tree. I would think you'd still want to go largely similar items. Lifesteal does give you off-tank stats, the additional sustain, a, a functionally similar to, to defense and how it's going to operate in the team fight. But I really would like to see just a little bit more tankiness from Final K, and I'm sure we will see some of it develop as the game goes on. Wrong you ults to adapting. Final K pops the ultimate and goes in the middle of three. Wow. Taunt back from Wrong you pulls Neil out of position, but Oath is up in the sky. Who's his dunk target? Shinto's used a lot in this fight, but Final K's got nothing left except his beads. Nearly turns it around, but Shinto gets the last swing. It's two for one. This time for the Eldritch Hounds, they return fire to the Leviathans in their own territory. Great juke from Final K to keep his life up for a little bit longer. After that teleport over wall from Oath, I thought it's wall, Final K's life guaranteed. Turns on his heel, avoids the Dharmic Pillar, avoids the wall, and says, I'll just do as much damage as I can before I go down. Unfortunately for him, even with the lifesteal build, didn't do enough damage to survive, and Oath with a decent dunk in that back line secures it. One for one trade there, but Shinto on the tail end, this time around, swinging in favor of the Elder Towns, in that he fell down, it gives over a pretty significant bounty. All that said, though, it feels like the Leviathans still have the potential to get aggressive. Shinto is still nursing a, a, a small lead or maybe a bit of parity, even in spite of falling down there. If we're talking one-for-one one potential, it should be the Leviathans every single time. But I don't want the game state to distract from the fact that the entire time we're watching this action on the right-hand side, Panicat is still just free-farming on left. That Freya is going to be a threat sooner rather than later. Already has the haste and the Telkines. Demonic Grip gets a buff recently. A little bit more power there, so significant power spike to come. I mean, Vaporish Coast is strong as well. Rom is not a slouch in the late game. Not exactly a Freya, though. Adapting. Gets the green buff stolen away. The benefit of the clean does be able to jump into that wall. Throw out one of your charges of ultimate. And Benny Q steals that buff away. Now denying some more farm over to Adapting, who's gone double crit, first two items. Final K, stuck inside the tower, knocks it away, and now has the entire squad Dude. alongside him once more. Ducky needs to buy a net, because he can't catch a break right now. Dude, it is insane the amount of pressure the Leviathans have put onto Ducky this entire set so far. That global presence, wrong you, leveraging it incredibly well. We've seen it two games in a row now. Athena has ult going to soul lane. It's just been the case. And the fights have always been happening in his tower. And it's so often the answer is just like, buy wards, you'll see it coming. You can't really see the global presence of the Leviathans coming. Adapting can play through lane. Rongu can play from anywhere on the map. And he'll get involved in that in that solo lane. So it's about where you find value for the Elder Towns. What can you do to offset it? Can Oath hover right side and leverage global presence to get there a little bit faster? Maybe. That's one answer. Can Oath... Head over to the duo lane and take a numbers advantage fight there. It's another answer. Instead, it's been a lot of farming in the jungle. Not a whole lot getting done there. And if we're talking about farming in the jungle and scaling. I'm looking at a three stack rage and an already finished Deathbringer for adapting. Scaling's going to be there sooner rather than later. Potential invade attempt there for Leviathans. They're just playing faster, J Mac. Look at them. Straight to the Gold Fury. Benny Q on the way. 
He's got to get there fast. He's got a wall to go through. By the time he even gets in there, it's already taken away. The Leviathans get a Fury, but Banny Banish. Hugh almost gets the kill. Banish bails out Shinto. Use that Volcanic Lightning to escape back to the tower. And the Leviathans, they take objective. They bail out of the fight instantly. And look at the gold lead now. We were dead even just a couple minutes ago, and now it's 2,500 up for the Leviathans. Best answer is Pyromancer, and it's Pyromancer fast. You could do it with Benny. His ultimate's available, but Ronnie and fine, okay. Sticking around, just enough to dissuade the Elgin Towns. Best answer, lost. Tries to kill fine, okay, but he's fine to stun on three, and now it will do it from wrong. You gives him even more protections to stay in this fight, and now you can see Leviathan's turn tail right back to him. Shinto goes for some damage, doesn't get the knock up on Neil Ma. And the Elder Chowns, who do their best to attempt killing Fine, okay. He turns around, stun three, and said, Well, now I've got my support. What are you going to do? It's Pyromancer start up for Leviathans. Just seeing if any of the Hounds will step forward. This will go very fast once Adapting makes contact. There's the DPS, and Pyromancer is gone. Rage Deathbringer just happens to do that when you've got it this early in the game. I'm thinking we're at the point now. For the Leviathans, where a singular pick, if it's on Benny, if it's on Ducky, you might even be able to do like a 1530 Fire Giant. Legitimately. That's how much damage adapting has got. If Pandacat's there, it's guaranteed. And so the Elgin Towns under major threat right now because of the risk of engagement. If the Elgin Towns find a one-man trade, they could have done Gold Free, they could have done Pyro. They can't do Fire. Leviathans kind of can. And so, that leaves you in a spot now where if you're on the house, you're thinking... Well, if we take a fight and we lose it, the, the punishment is so much heavier than if we win it. But you can't just continue to allow the Leviathans to farm because of their late game scaling. It's a very difficult question of what you're willing to do in, in so far as risk management. I think the only thing you can do, the only winning line, is for the Elgin Towns to, to still play their game, play that pick based composition. I'd still love for them to rotate over towards Pandacat. It's actually stressing me out seeing a triple Ofer. Uh, on the Freya, with Beads, Aegis, and Ultimate still available. He's going to farm. Pandacat, Pandacat's going to rotate into his first team fight at level 20. Uh, I'm thinking that's going to happen. He does. He's certainly not trying to bring a fight his direction. Now maybe trying to bait Coast forward, though, because you know Coast likes taking these 1v1s. Taught by Wrong Yu. Removes Beads from the carry. And look at the crit from adapting. Half health nearly on Vaporish Coast. But I think my question now comes, you know, typically in the past, right, at least recently, uh -oh. we don't see a whole lot of Neil. crit. Because that's because there's answers to it. But right now, there's no answer for adapting. Whoop on a Neil Ma. Drop down into death. And another kill for adapting will nearly stack up that rage. One more till its completion. A Leviathans, I got nothing stopping them. I mean, it, it, it is seldom that it is so clear where the delineation between two teams are. The Leviathans are playing faster, they're playing more together, they're death balling very well, and the Eldritch Hounds have been lacking in proactive play. It's the Leviathans posing the question every time. Are you ready for this four-man dive in the soul lane? Are you ready for this four-man dive in the duo lane? What about this Gold Fury? What about this Pyromancer? What about this Stygian Beacon? And, and the Eldritch Hounds are like, well, I was ready for three out of four. They haven't asked anything. Oh, no. The question they're asking is, are you ready to stop my jungle split push? Uh, clearly, the answer is yes. I don't think anybody's ready for anything. Thank you, B. Dagus. Gets help from Neilma. That's one answer back. But he used the second charge bolt just to clear wave. Ducky shows up to try and bail out. Shinto's got nothing left in the tank, and it's a kill for Coast. But Adapting takes down Benny Q, who walked back in. Wrong you. Pays the price immediately after. Silence on a final case. Stops the... Remaining bit of damage, but now the Panda Cat's in level 17. Goodness. Free cast at the whole game, shows up to one fight, gets a double kill right away. Leviathans, who's going to stop them right now? The answer is not the Hounds. Coast to the sky, needs, needs three. all three, misses cool. the third, adapting lives. So Juke shoes from adapting, gets them out of there. That was looking good for the Eldritch Hounds. The Leviathans a little bit over aggressive, I think confident. Uh, in the fact that they had just knocked down O, thought they could take that 2v2 under tower. Not exactly strong enough to be doing all that, especially with Ducky getting the jump on rotation. Gets there first. Make sure Fine OK was lagging just ever so slightly behind. With that said, though, Leviathans have done so much up until this point that a few deaths here or there are not exactly going to swing the entire game, especially when you're able to find your return kills and a tier 1 tower in exchange. And here's the thing. Levi's been doing it all set. 
I'm going to play fast. Five stacked on the left-hand side. Primal Fury. It'll go fast. Incredibly fast. Where are the hounds? Uh, nowhere. But they're in the middle of the map or to the right side. I don't even think that they knew that this was happening just because they see Final Case standing in mid lane. Pyromancer's also back up. Panicat immediately rotating over to that side of the map. He and Final K could couple up and take that one down, or maybe even just Panda Cat could potentially solo it. With the Hounds nearby, Panda Cat has that call. Four of them. Does he have the whoop to slow this one down? Wall from Oath will help to secure Pyromancer for the Hounds. That's one answer back, one that they've so desperately needed, but they're so far down. Myth 7,000 gold, 20 minutes in. One of the more staggering leads we've had in a game so thus far. It is. Surprised to see adapting stick on the, the left side there. I really thought it was Grab Fury, go straight Pyro, keep up the pressure instead. Adapting in Wrong Yu. Want to get a little bit more farm. Makes sense for Wrong Yu. He'll get there wherever there is, air quotes there, at a second's notice with his ultimate. Adapting needs line of sight, though, so was effectively removed from any engagement that happens on the right. All that said, I don't think the Leviathans are overly pressed by a Pyromancer going down. Got to evaluate the worth of Pyromancer by the usage of Runic Bomb and... I don't really see Neil Ma stepping up to any towers anytime soon. Leviathans grouped around fire. At least in the vicinity of, waiting for adapting to show back up. Did finish the serrated edge, working towards Bloodforge in his next slot. The double crit. There's finally an answer to crit. Spectral on That's Neil an aura. Ma. It's good. I was going to ask, you know, who builds it at this point? The answer is Neil Ma. Leviathans go for the fire giant. Neilma goes in. How can the fight go for Leviathans? That's what. Let's take a listen in to the team fight. Oh, no, get out, 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 Go back to farming. But who else but Panicat would say, but we could, guys. Come here, guys. Come, I'm hitting real hard. <laughs> we could fight him. <laughs> uh, at the end of the day, though, both calls are just straight up correct. The Elgin Town's not there to put up a defense. Backing up with Fire Giant, equally valuable as well. Leviathans get to do both. We did get to hear a, a bit of what Adapting's mind is on. He said, I'm split pushing everything. I will split push everything on the map. And I like that call for one simple reason. Who's going to stop adapting? You send two people, you lose the push elsewhere, right? 4v3 heavily favors the Leviathans. You send one guy, I mean, you saw what happened to that yeah. back camp. That's going to happen to that Ouch. guy. Yeah, that's a, what, a thousand damage on his first hit. He's going to be doing that. 4-0 and 4 right now for adapting on the slash line. 201 for Panda Cat, who again, until level 17, did nothing on the map. He sat in left lane, he free farmed with Coast. His first team fight, he walks in, he picks up a double kill and an assist. And holds on to his beads Aegis and uses the ultimate aggressively in that team fight. Yeah. So, if you can't stop Panda Cat, if you're not going to focus Panda Cat in a fight, and you also have to worry about adapting. Why is he frontlining? Who, who on this uh, Leviathan team can't even die? It feels like the only one who is dying is Shinto and Wrong Yu, and that's because they're just expending their bodies for everybody else at this point. Yeah, Shinto. Doing exactly that, holding up the front line here. This could go quick. Great wall. Locks down a few members of the Leviathans. It's a good deal of poke off a rip. This is exactly what I was talking about. Benny is is just invaluable in these team fights. The ability to do damage from inside the wall is the silver lining for the Eldritch Hounds. If things line up perfectly and you, you get two or three men in the first tick of the ultimate, walls are good, silence is there. You've got immediate burn potential, that, that immediate ability to just eviscerate someone and remove them from the map. But it is thin margins and it's telegraphed. You know exactly where Benny's coming from. You can see walls. Benny Q trying to hold on this defense. Gets the silence through wall. Tier 2. One more round of enhance from Final K. Takes that one down. Oh, by the way, a Fury also for Leviathans. And the third and final beacon. And probably At least grab for a this rotation. In a second. Could go to Pyro. Titan's going to push up left side of the map, so. I wonder then what the Leviathans do with that, knowing that, okay, Titan's got to go do its own thing over on left side of the map. With the lead the Leviathans have, and it's staggering at 12,000 at this point. 
the Leviathans just even care about it. I mean, I know they need to kill the Titan left before they can kill the Titan inside the base. But you just, do you just let the Titan push up, do its own thing, force a fight elsewhere? I mean, what do you do as the Leviathans in this case with this much of a lead? If you could get to either the mid or right Phoenix before the Titans meet, that is probably the best line for the Leviathans. Splitting the map and, and mental stacking the Elder Towns. Are you ready to deal with the Titan on left? Are you ready to deal with this push? And, and splitting their attention, certainly very valuable. If you're not capable of getting to the mid or right Phoenix before Titans meet, just go to the Titan. Go and preferably get to their Titan before it gets to yours, keeping yours as healthy as possible and, and pushing down the other towns is certainly incredibly valuable. But here's the thing, J Mac, and and the real answer to all of it. When you're uh however much gold ahead as the Leviathans are right now, there isn't a wrong play besides walk in the enemy fountain. There just really isn't one. They are so heavily favored in any fight that they could find ever that that it, it really does not matter. Inaction and straight up inting are the only things that are, are poor for the Leviathans to be doing. Panicat solos out the Titan on the left. Allows his to continue the march down. Leviathans didn't really do a whole lot with that Titan. Didn't group up towards mid or right side. Did take a Pyromancer. So they do have that Runic Bomb available to them still. Fire Giant's up in just a few seconds as well, so maybe a group up there gets some deep ward coverage. If you're the Leviathans at this point, now with both Titans driven back, now just returns to only the Phoenixes needs to be defended Look by at the other towns, but with all the wards that the Leviathans have placed, they're going to know where the Hounds are rotating at any point during this Fire Giant. So the Leviathans can safely do this one knowing that they have a mile's worth of playroom before they'd ever have a Hound step foot in the pit. And just look how quickly it goes. I mean, there, there really was not a whole lot the Elgin Towns could do there. You're not fighting in neutral territory. You're certainly not stealing the Fire Giant there, so... Collect as much farm as possible it is the only thing you can do. Vaporish Coast gives over a small boon of gold to the rest of his team with a Tier 1 tower. We'll see how well their base defense serves. Benny, Neil, and Ducky. Those are the ultimates you need to watch. Those little diamonds on the left side of your screen, so important. Once they're down... That's just about all the team fight potential from the Elder Towns. I'll have to hold that for a little while, though. The Leviathans, with plenty of gold in pocket and plenty of power spikes to hit, will go ahead and head back to base. And plenty of time, too, with this Fire Giant. It's easy to forget, considering all that has happened throughout this game, but we're only 26 minutes in. Yeah. I mean, this, is, this has been a breakneck pace. The Leviathans really don't need to do a whole lot for a while. I mean, knock down one bird, and, and you've essentially done it. That's all you need from this fire giant. So go ahead. Take the lackadaisical approach. Cross your T's, dot your I's, grab a Primal Fury. Keep it simple. What's baffling about him is, I think it's like 20 minutes in, we were looking at 7,000 gold. Like, all right, that's pretty, that's pretty good. Yes. But every time I look back up, another minute goes by, and another 1,000 gold keeps going to the Leviathans. And, and again, it's not like the Leviathans are... are Killing the Elder Towns on cooldown and then you know, just taking every structure or whatnot on the map. They're just taking whatever's in the jungle as they walk by, as they stroll through the map. They just keep expanding this lead. Benny Q, some damage on the left side. A lot towards Panda Cap, but he's got life steal. So all that damage was for naught. So Oath. He's got to just see what he can do. Shinto, not as much life steal. One good pirate class on a wave should heal him back up, but Leviathan's waiting for a moment. Oh, Tonto's a Neil man. Ball. He's nearly gone. The dot's not quite enough from the items, but adapting Sonic Boom to the back Whoa. with a one kill and 600 after 600 crit. Who's going to stop the him? Captain the early. Mountain is going to stop him because he misses the dash. But a left side Phoenix goes to Leviathan's wall by Oath is good. Vapor's Coast walks up, gets taunted right back in by wrong you to the sky is coast but on landing has a whole heap of hell waiting for him panicat swinging on his away but he doesn't get the ones that he coast needs that's out panicat takes down ducky and the health bar is not so great on the side of leviathans oh it's in no man's land and he's been spotted now panicat off the mark with banish and shinto low hp needs to play cautious but it's what? benny on the chopping block steps too far forward does plenty of damage but cannot survive himself and now it's the leviathans with two dead on the elder towns Knocking on the mid-Phoenix. Mid-Phoenix. 
Half HP. Neil Ma ultimate onto Panda Cat. He's up in the sky. Keep your eyes on Oath. Never mind. Panda Cat did. He what said, hell? okay, I see you. Here's all of my damage. And a taunt in by Wrong You. Neil Ma just got back. And he's already going to go to the grayscale yet again. Oh, no. The whoop is off the, uh, on the mark this time. Shinto, credit for that kill. But Panda Cat, who was nearly dead, back to full HP. It's only Coast to defend. Never mind. He's taunted back in. Coast is gone. Leviathans take game two. I mean, the Levi's are just playing so much faster than the Eldritch Hounds. The Hounds weren't ready. And it's exactly as you said. It's not as if the Leviathans are swamping the Hounds in every single team fight then grabbing an objective. It's Leviathans walked through the jungle and the Gold Fury was there. And then it wasn't, right? And then it was the Pyromancer. And then it was the Fire Giant. And then it was the Gold Fury and the Pyromancer. And then it was the Towers. And then it was Oath, like, twice as well. There have not been proper answers. And we have not seen the Hounds ask the questions. And I think that is the biggest change we're seeing from this week's Hounds to the previous. I was seeing a lot of confident plays. I was seeing a lot of engagements, a lot of uh, objective play from the Hounds. Now it's a lot of, man, I sure hope the Leviathans aren't over there. Oh, man, it'd be a real shame if the Fire Giant went down. Well, you can't be waiting to see what the Leviathans do next. I, I think it's clear the answer for the, the Elder Towns in Game 3 is to maybe be a bit proactive on the map. Be the ones to force the Leviathans to do something, because right now it's been... All Leviathans for control. They take game number two and put themselves on match point. Can they keep it up and solidify a game three for themselves? Find out right after this.
Welcome back, everyone, as the Leviathans now go up 2-0. Uh, it's Goran and inbound as we, we try to break into this one. And really, uh, at least what I got out of that inbound, the Leviathans look great in team fights. Like I mean, you put them together, assemble them like Voltrons. What we, I mean, we called them years ago because they did it really well. And it seems like they've gotten back to like that style of pace. I mean, the pace that they were setting, the Hounds just could not keep up. Yeah, this Hounds comp, Especially in team fights, they need a few seconds for that team fight to kind of start up before they can actually like get in there. That's like the downside of gods like Thor. That's something that they really lack. And the Levi's are getting into these fights quick, and they're ending very quickly. We need to see the Hounds switch up. I, I, this Thor is usually a very high prio god, and it. it's got a lot of value, obviously. But Myth told me something on the way back, where there's some days it's just not a Thor day. Yeah. Oath specifically is not hitting a ton of abilities. I also think the Levi's picks into this Thor are also very, very strong. I want to see the Hounds step away from the Thor, pick one of those power jungle picks, Kama, Pele. I mean, even set in the jungle, I think I'd prefer at this point over the Thor. These fights are just happening way too fast, and we need to see the Hounds, you know, change up something. Otherwise, they're going to be going down 3-0 and losing the set that quick. Yeah, I was looking, you know, towards the past, uh, specifically trying to find the, the different things that we've seen from Oath on Thor. And... It's just one of those gods, like, he's never necessarily done bad on it, but I, I remember even talking to you about it where I was just like, you know, I have I know Oath has had great Thor games that I've even seen, but it was it never stood out to me as, like, that's a that's an Oath pick, baby. Like, he's a Thor guy, you know? And so it is impressive to me, at least to see him go back to it. I wouldn't mind changing it up, uh, I think, going into this. Adapting as well looked really good on the Mercury, and everybody on the Leviathan looked really good as it turns out. Uh, and really, you get that kind of spread across the map. As you know, I think adapting was very, very uh, in. What's the word? Involved. There it is. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, involved. in. It has. There's another part of it. Involved. Uh, he was involved across the board. And uh, you know, we were talking about it like, hey, do you party punch Golden Blade for like early game? Let's beat him down. Do you gooseberries and and rage to hey, and no matter what, I'm gonna beat you down. And, and looking at the builds, like I know Neil, I think eventually got to the spectral, but by the time he got to the spectral, the Leviathans had already been able to kind of run away with it. So that early rage really working out, that early crit really working out. Uh, the only time that really was unfortunate for adapting is when we caught him missing the dash going yeah, into the fountain, the fountain. Uh, which. Sometimes it happens, man. And at that point, you're chasing him into the fountain. You kind of know that you're super far ahead. <laughs> True, and he got both relics as he, like, dashed through also from both the Kleena yeah. and the Rama. Uh, yeah, adapting, putting on a show in these late-game teamfights. And as you highlighted, his early game was really strong for, like, a Mercury also. Usually you think of Mercury as a god that you want to get to late game on. Uh, Mercury really strong at that level 5. He's got one of the best ganks in the entire game at level 5. Yeah. And they've really been kind of, you know, putting a lot of pressure on Ducky. And Ducky's been getting ganked a lot, and he's been being put behind. And Oath just isn't really visiting this lane. And I think a little bit also comes back to this Athena that rongi has been piloting. Uh, game one, I think he had a, a fantastic game. Game two is a little bit uh, more laid back, and his team was kind of putting on a lot of work. But he's just been able to visit the solo lane with the, with the Athena ult also. And Ducky's in a lot of 3v1s over there, not yeah. getting any help. And as that's happening, the Hounds aren't doing anything else around the map. It's just them farming. So there's, the Levi's are putting pressure somewhere. The Hounds aren't responding to it and aren't putting pressure anywhere else. The Levi's are just free to make plays almost wherever and whenever they want. I know there's going to be someone, Flare Boot probably, anybody out there that's better at math than I, <laughs> than I am, especially Smite math, uh, because some of that stuff gets complicated fast. Uh, I know I was talking to you and, and just like, I don't know how big of a boost an Athena ult is for a Mercury, but like, because it gives that move speed now. And I really do, like, I just want to know, it's probably nothing. It's probably, in reality, it's probably like this really small number that doesn't change yeah, it, like, too much. You get DR'd by the movement speed of Mercury's movement yeah, speed, yeah. so. <laughs> so, like, maybe it's not a big deal, but that feels like something. I mean, even if it's not like a huge power boost, oh man, now there's Mercury's moving at me quicker is also not really good for your life. Scary. So, Very scary. Uh, causes some troubles for him. That was the last pick from the Leviathans. Don't expect to see it too high up as we get into game three. Hounds will remain the first pick. Leviathans are up to zero. And the bands are starting to roll through. So far, the top four, at least, remain the exact same as last time. Oleron plus Set on the other side. Chernabog, Yamoja. Athena, though, joins the equation. And like you said, that might at least keep Ducky having a slightly better time in lane. Yeah, I, I, it's a good ban. Ronnie's been looking good on it. It's, it's something where Ronnie's also made a lot of plays with the Athena Global. It's a good throwaway ban. Ares obviously really strong. I don't think I have to point that out. 
but they've proven that they've played around this Athena really well. Make them play something else at this point. Uh, Athena, Ama, the last two bands. Yeah. The Ares, the, the one I was just talking about, is the one that is going to be let through from last game's P's and B's. And Ares locked in as the first pick. Really strong 2v2, very strong mid game. Not the strongest late game, but I like this for the Hounds. Give you something to play around in this early game that transitions into the mid game that's just very, very powerful. Now, do you think that Ares, like, even though he's got a, a lot of strings to him, especially, like, I'm going to tell you, you probably know this from several experiences, but bolster defenses, that's a really good ability, <laughs> as it yes, turns out. It, it, it gives good. a lot under there. When you start to read it, you, you, there's a certain point where your jaw starts to lower because you're like, Oh my god, he does that too? And that? Uh, but is he, like, first pick worthy? Because he's, like, he's good. He, is he that good? Yeah, it's always risky picking a god like Ares. He, his strength is incredible right now, but there's always the downside to Ares where if, if Neil dies first on this Ares, or if he's not able to dominate this 2v2 like an Ares wants, this could just be a, a very bad pick, and you could just do absolutely nothing. However, I do like it as a first pick. Yeah. I think giving yourself that possibility of just running the game through duo is always going to be positive. And I, I like that they are now transitioning from a more slower comp in Game 1 and Game 2 to a we want to fight, and we want to fight on our terms whenever we need to with this Ares. I like that a lot more. Uh, Levi's on the other side. Go for the Pele, Freya. Pele looked great last game. No surprise. Freya looked great last, last game also. Another no surprise. Two very high prio picks. And Panda looked fantastic. Uh, Shinto also looked fantastic on the Pele. Now, Pele and Freya. The pace that Pele and Freya were setting, even if you take out the Mercury, pretty fast. Ares, Thor, Hercules. So double front line, what you can expect out of the solo, out of the, the, the support. And presumably the Thor now going back to Oath. And like you said, sometimes it's not Thor Day. Uh, yeah. This is the chance to maybe prove that wrong, I guess. <laughs> yeah, there's always a world where they win this game and the Thor looks good, but after the last two games and what the Thor has brought, and it's been very minimal what it's brought, and it's not even just an O thing. I think the team has played pretty lackluster around the Thor, oh, too. Oh, yeah, for sure. And then to go back to it, maybe they just needed something from dual lane. Maybe they just needed a lane to play through because of how much solo lane was getting camped. They, they want to play towards this dual lane, and that's what the th they think the Thor can bring. And that's why they went back to it. But it's just, there's the camera up that just gets locked in. There's gods uh, that just do more early game that allow you to play around duel just as easy as Thor. And if you lose two games on it, I, it, especially with how it looked, I just don't think there's a great reason to go back to it. I'm not a fan of it, but I'm happy to be proven wrong. Uh, Levi's opt into that camera. Uh, just another fantastic top three from the Levi's. So much flex potential, so many strength in these gods that can be played most lanes, I mean, Frey can be, but probably is just going to go back to duo. But these Levi's top three just seem so clean. Merlin, Zhongkui, Cerberus. When was the last time? Well, I guess the Kamazots was down there, so he's not going to be down there. Hades will be down for the Hounds as the final four bands. And look, and you know, we haven't seen the Ares. We did see the Hercules. We did see the Thor. And unasked, but right now I'd say the Leviathans are pulling maybe a little bit ahead draft-wise. Uh, yeah, I agree. Uh, if we're calling it a race, they're definitely in the lead. Aphrodite is being hovered. And I, I'm always trepidatious to talk about anything that gets hovered, because sometimes it doesn't get locked in, but you seem to have uh, something ready for, for maybe an Afro. Uh, I don't mind Afro into an Ares matchup. Okay. Uh, oh, I guess, yeah. Undying Love's yeah. pretty good, huh? Really good into Ares <laughs> once he hits five, once they're both five. And then the laning phase, you interrupt Ares' is clear. You also can out-trade him. They opt for the cab and said, and last time they did play around the Ares, the cab was their answer. They went to absolute, or Ronnie, I guess. They didn't all do it. Yeah, Ronnie went the all absolution. All five, it was really weird. <laughs> Ronnie went the absolution, and he was ulting the cleanse while also locking in the Ares. And then their comp just kind of relied on killing this Ares. They don't have as great of burn to follow up to the cab ult. They don't have that true mage in mid lane, at least I'd assume they don't. So it's a little bit of a different comp, but there's still that opportunity where if Ares is behind, he's going to be fodder. Yeah, it's definitely some difficult... I mean, just position can be put in. Neil, last game, I mean, <laughs> there were times... Unfortunate for him, but it just, he could not get anything done, right? I mean, the Ganesh was more sacrificial lamb after a while than it was actually actively changing the pace of the game. So, like you said, if the Ares suffers a similar fate, starts to fall behind, then 
we might just get a repeat of game two, unfortunately for Neil Ma. What kind of answers, you know, while the Hounds are thinking about it, I mean, you're, you're looking for probably a Benny pick. Like, do you want to see him go to an Assassin? Are there any mages that maybe stand out to you right now? Uh, I think Benny have actually been looking really good on that Kalina. I think he was like the one highlight in last game where it was, Benny had a good game. I really think Benny on Kalina has looked so good on it. I wouldn't mind if Benny went back to it. And then they could opt for a magical ADC and duo. I, I think Shoal is, is an opportunity. I don't know entirely, I'm not an ADC, I never was an ADC, so I don't yeah. know entirely how the Soul Freya matchup works out, but it's something where if Soul gets ahead, Freya isn't able to do too much in there. You see Panda. Yeah, I think he's in a, a good bit. mood, man. <laughs> something about those two O's gets you, gets you a little jazz. It, it gets you jumping a little bit. You can see. I mean, even earlier, we were on Final Case okay, Cam, adapting's like leaning over to wave into it. Just kind of let everybody know. And, and that's a, a good sign if you're a Leviathans fan right now. That they're in full on high spirits. They don't have a whole lot of time to lock in. Hounds are going to go for the Agni. And they're going to go for the Jing Wei. Why are we picking Jing Wei with Ares? <laughs> we have such a good duo lane support picked. And then we just opt into not playing through duo lane. So at this point, uh, and uh, the, the, the Levi still have their final pick. It's most likely going to be their solo laner. So we don't know entirely how that lane works out. Maybe they're so confident in this Hercules in this matchup that they just think they can play through that. So I won't count that out. But if you pick a god like Ares, you want to play around uh, an ADC that can really fight with you. The Jing Wei is not a god that wants to fight. So it's almost like the Hounds played or, or drafted their comp to play around the Ares rotating out and just farming through the early game, which is one of his strengths, which doesn't make a ton of sense to me. The, the Hounds comp will play very well in mid games, don't get me wrong. They have a very safe back line that has a lot of follow up, a lot of beads burn, and they have really, really good dive. So if they can, you know, not fall behind in the early game, their mid game is very strong. But then you go to that late game, and I don't even think their late game scales all that well. Agni's fine, Jing's fine, but Ares is not a good late game god. Thor is really dependent. Herc is really dependent. I, I'm not completely sold on the Hounds comp. And the Levi's go with the chalk last. I don't know how you're playing through a chalk Hercules lane. Nothing is going to be happening over, the here, over there. I, I'm just all in on this Levi's comp. I think this looks gorgeous. I think the Hounds comp is very flawed and it has a lot of holes in it. And, and I think this might be a 3-0. Coming out, I mean, strong already. Like, if the draft is, is that far skewed, and then you take into the account of what we've seen in games two and one, maybe gets a little shaky. Chalk as well. Like, y the minute I saw that, you were you were talking about team fight. I'm just sitting here like, well, the silence really sucks for Ares. Oh, it really sucks for Thor. Oh, man, that's going to kind of suck for Hercules. Like, there's not a single person on the Hounds that is looking at that, that Chalk and thinking, man, when he ults, I'm going to be ready for it and, and, and set. Like, no, you're going to have a rough time. <laughs> yeah, and then on top of that, the area control that Chalk's Rain has it, it, when he uses his one, that's a huge area that Agni has to just plod his way through, try to get to, into a team fight. Uh, I just, uh, th this is such a good comp by the Levi's. I don't think Chalk's a great character. I, yeah. I think he's a fine character, and he's a good counter pick kind of into Herc just to kind of live this lane, as he's always been just a, a live the lane type god. But I, I just don't know how the Hounds are even going to be able to play anything past, you know, the mid portion of the game. Well, that's been the big question. I know a lot of people, I saw some, some discussion in chat. I know we were talking about it a little yesterday, uh, especially after last week and, and given what phase one was. I was thinking, you know, Neil, definitely new to this team, but still curious. What is the Hounds MO? What are, what are they going to bring uh, to the table? Because last phase, it took them a little while to, to kind of get running. But once they finally figured it out, they looked phenomenal. And it maybe took two, three weeks before the, they really had that, but we th I thought we were seeing the glimpses of it. So far today, uh, we haven't. There were discussions. Is this going to be a 3-0 for the Levi? Some people saying, is this going to be a 3-0 for the Hounds after the last one? Uh, and it feels like right now the Levi's just came out to play a little stronger. And when you make these roster changes, there's always going to be ups and downs. You're going to have games where you look fantastic. Last week, they had a couple fantastic games. They got ahead. They had some really good mid games. And then there's going to be the lower sides of it where wh whether it's a comp thing, comms thing or just gameplay thing uh, you're just gonna have like you know areas where you just weaken and I think this is a pretty big game for the Hounds because I think they want to show at least something in this set it's a really 
Yeah. Somewhat demoralizing, at least, getting three out in such dominant fashion. So I want to see the Hounds do at least something this game, get ahead, maybe even take the game. If they do take it with a comp like this, I, I love that for them. And honestly, it's going to be the big test. Can they do it? Backs against the wall, they have to win, or it's a big dub for the Leviathans. It's game three, and it's J-Mac and Myth. Thank you so much, Gore and Bobby on the desk. J-Mac, Myth, and Doug back for game three between the Hounds and Leviathans. Leviathans now one game away from a sweep up against the Eldritch Hounds and set to see. The Hounds have some fight back. Chat not too confident in them though. 83 to 17 in favor of Leviathans. Sort of nearly 50-50 in game one. And after game after game two, I'm maybe not so surprised that the Twitch chat is really starting to favor Leviathans. Yeah, this is everybody saying, look, it's not like great returns on, on my investment here to vote Levi's, but I gotta recoup some losses from voting Hounds. I get it, I'm a betting man. I understand how that game goes. God, I hope the Hounds win to just ruin Twitch economy. God, it'd be so it's funny. the best part. It would be, but uh, unfortunately for uh, my own personal chaotic wants, I'm thinking uh, Bobby was right on the desk. I really do like what the Leviathans have cooked up here. I'm not so certain that uh, I agree that the Eldritch Hounds composition is maybe as bad as he had alluded to, but certainly still is pretty heavily favored Leviathans. The only concern I have for the Leviathans is, is something that Athena did entirely in the last few compositions, and it's initiation and ease of initiation. Wrong you similar levels of it with the wall, not as consistent though, not up as frequently. Fine OK is going to have to pick up a, a lot of the slack in that regard. Chalk, I've been the biggest Chalk hater on the broadcast for how, how long my tenure has been here. With that said, I actually don't hate how Chalk interacts with the Eldritch Hounds composition. Feels like Benny in particular is going to suffer once Final K leaves the lane. Yeah, Thing Impound put it really well, especially if you know, Benny Q doesn't have a dash. Throw Axe from Final K, drop that rain, have two giant areas where Benny Q is just treading through the thickest mud possible to try and limp out of these fights. Oath already starting off on the back foot. Now half his health removed. Keeps going to this Thor, but too. And Shinto. This third game in a row on the Thor, game one was more of a kind of late to the party style. You know, it was, oh no, Ducky's getting ganked. See if I can get over. Oh, it's already too late. He's dead. Well, I'll just go back to farm. Game two had moments where, where, where Oath was starting to get involved, get a little bit more active. And then late game just had a couple of missteps. Look over at the Phoenix and said, okay, well, keep your eyes on Oath. He can find this good wraparound on a Panic Cat. And then immediately Panic Cat said, oh, somebody's here. Turns around to find a kill, so. I probably would have liked to have seen him switch to something other than the Thor because it just hasn't worked out so far for him today. You know, and Oath is a phenomenal Thor player. I'm going to get ahead of it here. Some days are not Thor days, and every SPL jungler will tell you exactly what I mean when I say that. Thor is a god in Smite, maybe more so than any other, that demands mechanical excellence consistently. If you're not hitting double tap 80% of the time, you're not playing Thor at even 50% of his strength, right? If you're not connecting your ultimates at least two or three man ultimates once or twice in a match, things are just not going to pan out. You just got to be ready on the Thor. And sometimes, the you know, you wake up on the wrong side of the bed. Uh, you, there was a bug in your Cheerios. You know, something, something happened and it just doesn't line up. I'm not saying we're there just yet for Oath, but I'm thinking if game three looks like game one and two, we were there for Oath. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's my most diplomatic way of wording it. Could even just be a case where we saw for players like Scream, they just say, I want to play this god. No matter if it's winning or losing, I want to play this. Maybe it's, you want to get some extra experience on it. Maybe you yeah, just want to keep, keep working it. You know, it, it worked really well in scrims. Keep going out of here. Maybe it was just, you know, I had one misstep in the early game and that just kind of spiraled things out, but Thor's never really been one of those where you kind of go, man, I wonder if this kind of works here. Thor either usually works or he doesn't work, and so far it hasn't worked. You know what a great example of it is? In Season 9, Phase 2, Captain Twig broke out Thor for the first time for the entire year, and I think that's the last time we saw him <laughs> on Thor. It's that kind of thing where it's just you just got to have it. And Oath usually does, and I expect more from him. It, it is worth noting that your jungler is always going to look especially rough when the team is losing. Oath. What are we doing here? Just going to escape this situation. The jungler always does look like one of the worst players on the team when, when a team is losing significantly. It's jungle and support. Because they've got their hands in every basket, they're, in, they're a part of every engagement, and for the most part, they're holding up that front line. So... I'm going to give a little bit of leeway there in that the Eldritch Hounds just have not been able to find their footing in this matchup. 
uh, past the 10 minute mark so far in this set. So if the Eldritch Hounds can keep their heads above water, maintain a relative state of parity, things could look better. Well, <coughs> Benny's got beads. Uh, beads don't save you from all of this damage. I mean, that was a, a dash away from Benny Q, followed by an immediate volcanic lightning jump in from adapting. So first blood, two little Viathans. And well, before that death happened, I was going to ask you, well, if you're Oath on Thor, where do you go? Where do you try and get pressure in one of these lanes? Because Chalk doesn't seem fun to try and play it against. We know he's not going over to duo lane, as indicated at least by game two, where Panic Cap free farm till 17. So do you play through mid? Well, now the death on the Bendy Q might be a little tougher. Yeah, but playing on mid right now is still a very good spot to be. Just because Pele doesn't have great interactions with Thorwall. Dunk into Thorwall, and he's stuck, and Benny Q's always going to have follow-up. So long as he's somewhere in the lane, Ogni's range, very good. So I think rotations there could be valuable. You really don't want to go over towards the soul lane. Feels like... Final K is going to be pretty difficult to shut down there. Duo lane, I mean, that's as ideal as it gets. A kill on a Freya is the highest value kill you're going to get on the map, besides maybe adapting uh, at this portion of the game. But what you get is slowing down a late game Freya, which is just so great for your team. But as you said, we've got two games of data now that Panicat will be free farming over there in that duo lane. So, yeah, keep keep get, keep headed mid. Keep headed mid. I think that, that's got to be the play for Oath. Well, he wasn't mid. Whoop misses from Panda Cat. So Oath able to steal away the back camp. Fine, okay. Tries with adapting to steal away blue. Unsuccessful this time. The Elder Town's now playing a bit more aggressive. Able to gab not just that back harpy, or not that back chest camp, but also the purple buff. Removing that from Panda Cat. Putting some pressure there. Not allowing Panda Cat to have Man. every ounce of free farm on the map. The fact that adapting is able to steal a speed and essentially just walk away from this might be one of the more criminal aspects of all of this. And he's sticking around. He's like, well, maybe I could take this one little tiny camp on the way out. I mean, he gets the ultimate off Ducky, but, like, who cares? I mean, Ducky's not killing him either way there. Adapting had ultimate throughout the entirety of it. I think Ducky's just trying to force resources, see whatever he can get done. Even this is not a massive threat to adapting. Bad out of hell is true to its name. He, he's getting out of just about every single situation, but... Applying poke will prevent him from rotating towards mid or maybe pressuring Benny. So I like the allocation of time there from the Elder Towns. And even with Ducky spending so much time in the jungle, he'd actually gotten the better end of the matchup with fine okay. So it loses maybe two or three minions to tower. Still should be nursing a slight lead. It is worth noting, though, with Ducky as well, we get Breastplate of Valor back. That is a buffed item. The base Breastplate of Valor as well as its upgrades have received some significant Rush buffs in this patch. I think it's in a decent spot. If you're rushing it, though... I think that does mean you, you kind of want to get involved in a team fight a little bit sooner rather than later. So rotations towards mid could be the play. Could be like we were talking about back in game two. Want to be ready for that Stygian beacon fight? Well, Ducky's ready for it. Man, that's a nearly 3,000 gold investment for Ducky, Neoma. Ults two. Pulls him back in. No beads or ultimates used in return. But now it's a turn and burn back on Neil Ma. Stun is good. And now it's Shinto here. The party's done, but it's a crash from Oath to nearly take down one. Does end up getting one, but he trades his life to double kill for Shinto. And even with Benny Q stepping up, it's giving May Porch Coast some extra confidence to go in. Stun kicks on a Panda Cat, gets him in the sky. And the Leviathans take it two for one. I mean, that's a great dunk from Oath. More of that. That is exactly what you want to see. Involved in the team fight, separates the engagement, make sure that there is some sort of fight back. Unfortunately for Oath, it's kind of a Jingwei over there. Not exactly the best at PvP just yet. Probably want a little bit more crit before you, you got the real follow-up, so doesn't quite find the full value from that massive stun afforded to him by Oath, but even just looking at the relics, I think it is so significant. Now Shinto doesn't have beads, which means Shinto should just die to a dunk so long as Oath can find it in the next two minutes. Purple stolen by Coast Panda Cat. Relegated to sitting under Tier 1 tower after nearly going down in that fight and having his wave shoved into the Tier 1. But this is the most proactive that Oath has been playing on the map so far this set. But then these rotations over to dual lane, not letting Panda Cat get to that same level of farm and safety that he had in game number one. Still two assists on Panda Cat, so forcing a bit more activism from him this time. But I think you're, I think you put it perfectly. More of this. 
more oath dunks to duo lane, try and get kills, more attempts at, at, at kills over anything else. I don't want to see passive Thor's. Thor's all about the big plays. I want to start seeing some more. He's doing a good job of it so far. And you can even see it reflected on map a bit here. Panda Cat now slightly behind. Cage is good. Benny mm. is not. He is simply removed from the map. That's a... Uh, that's going to keep happening, is the thing. I'm looking at the screen here. No Phantom Shell just yet. Neomon is going to want to upgrade that sooner rather than later, but even if it was upgraded, it wasn't available. Even if it was available, it wasn't there. So not a whole lot of counterplay available to Benny. The only thing he could have done, Benny, that is, is be already in the tower. Yeah, something wrong, you caught his dash with the wall, and that's, that's part GG. of why Benny Gu goes down. Because, as I mentioned earlier, beads aren't going to... Not gonna save you from the damage. Sure, you can get rid of some CC. There's a whole lot of damage following up from now that lack of the CC that's hitting you. Especially with Shinto and how potent he has been on this pick. Three and zero already on the Paley. We're only 10 minutes into the game. And, and when we got into picks and bans, I was looking, I see Kamasas and I see Pay locked in. I go, okay. That can go to either player. You know, both of those picks can, can either go to Shinto and then go to adapting. But Joe, you know, there was a little bit of joke. We had the Leviathans in the studio yesterday if you didn't, you know, tune in for that. Daphne kind of made a little joke about how his Pele may not have been as good as Shinto's the last the last two times that they got kind of played out there. Shinto, I think, 6-0 and zero last time he had this pick. Adapting, not the greatest showing on the 2-7. and seven. So after Shinto has a great performance on a game 2, maybe no surprise it's back in his hands and still popping off in game 3. And Kamazaz just solidly fits Adapting's style. Having that get-out-of-jail-free card allows him to play a bit more aggressive. When we compare adapting to the, maybe some of his contemporaries in the league, I would say it's a more subdued style from him, unless he's playing a pick that has that get out of jail, some sort of global presence, the ability to get up into the air, or, or a self-banish, and Kamazots does all that. Ducky needs some help, needs a way out, but he's got neither of those ones. Push oh. against Shinto, nearly takes him down. Oh, dunks in, secures it with the wall. Ducky lives. Oath gets one, fine okay, gets hit by the double tap, and the spin! Double kill for Oath, the Hounds back in it. It's about time Ducky got some help on these ganks, right? Feels like game one and two, we're talking, man, Ducky survived a really long time. He did a lot of damage, you know? It was not easy to kill him, but nobody was there. This time Oath shows up, and he shows up big, and turns the fight on its head, a double kill over to the jungler, and a bounce pack performance from the Elder Towns there. Love every single bit of it. That's a smart adaptation. You know the Leviathans now are very willing to dedicate a whole lot of time to making it miserable to exist if your name is Ducky. Well, then maybe you can mediate some of that. You can mitigate it, excuse me, by sending some of your own presence to the right-hand side of the map. Oath arrives at that answer in game three. And already now in a much better position. This is a much closer game than where we are previously. That said... It's the Elder Towns with the Onus now. A significant gold lead over to them. Can you perhaps leverage that into an objective? I mean, it's not going to be the easiest thing on the planet, but your composition does have best confirmation on map. I don't think anyone's matching Rainfire into Flame Wave. So if it does come down to a coin toss on either Gold or Pyromancer, it's weighted to the Hounds. Panda Cap being chased out by Coast. Level up on the Jing Wei, but... Now it's Oath once more to the sky. Panda Cat doesn't get hit by the dunk. Oath misses out this time. Panda Cat still has ultimate use speeds. And oh. But ends up burning both from the Hounds for that rotation. But solid amount of CDR in Oath's build. He can go right back over once more, adapting. Chained up by Neil Ma. Benny Q. Dangerously walks in the middle of three. Uses the Aegis early and the beads after. Neil Ma tries to pull back Shinto. Does do so with wrong wow. use help. And Adapting still barreling forward. Benny Q is low, but Wallace caught up in Porsche Coast and Adapting has grabbed Benny Q all by his lonesome. Agus from Vaporce Coast buys him an extra bit of time. Stunned from Wrong Yu gets beads from Oath. And a fight that looks so great starting out for the Hounds comes up for the Leviathans. I think low key, Neil Ma ult cost them the kill. Shinto is going to get hit by bomb stun there and likely a little bit more damage afterward. But because Neil Ma hits him with a no escape, and was isolated on the right-hand side of the map. Shinto said, thank God, man. Uh, volcanic lightning was down. I didn't have beads. I'm dead here if this bomb stun connects. And he's delivered away from it. Doesn't even take the damage. So he's allowed to re-engage at 80%. Adapting's got the flank of the team fight and the Elch Towns. Unfortunately, 
victims of circumstance there. Lose out on what could have been a, a massive shutdown kill. Now 2-0 oh, and 3 for adapting on the Kamazots. Shinto did get shut down earlier. That, that dive towards Ducky did benefit Oath, at least catching him back up to adapting, keep them relatively even. But now, death onto Oath, going over to adapting, puts that lead back in the Kamazots' hands. Wrong you get stunned out by Oath. I thought for a moment Wrong you was just going to go out for blood, so you stunned me. Well, I got a couple of my kit too. Spares him for the time being, just sets up around Pyromancer. If this is the, the first game of the set where we still have a Gold Fury standing by the 14 minute mark. And that does bode well for the Elder Towns, who are still sitting on that small lead. I had thought we would see a little bit more crit in build from Vaporish Coast by this point, which would open up the door to some of these objectives. Speaking of objectives, it was only a matter of time you speaking into existence. Not the Gold Fury, but the Pyromancer it is knocked down. And it is a concerning trend in this set that might come back to bite them here in game three for the Hounds. Leviathans just show up, heat check an objective, and usually it's just that. Heat check, someone shows up, disengage. Hounds have not been showing up. And, and if you're not there, what's going to stop the Leviathans? Nothing. Now, I don't want this to come across as mean when I say this. It's but I wonder how many... Almost always going to be mean. But I wonder how many ultimates from Neil it will take before Wrong You gets the timing on Absolution. Because, and I say this, he built it on Ganesh last week against an Ares... And it took him two or three times where he gets pulled by the Ares before he gets before he finds the timing for Absolution. So He'll I wonder it if it'll out. take I him. I trust him. One, one, maybe two at most. But in wrong, you should like a relatively get the new down. item, man. Come on, cut him some slack. It, it hasn't really been meta for a while, but that one and a half second CC immunity they got that buff recently. It's made it a little bit more enticing now for some of these supports to pick it up, especially these ones that don't have that inherent CC in their kit. Yeah, it is going to be CC important. Immunity. I mean, it could really cost you a team fight in the late game if he's not on the ball with it. So you're, you're right to call it out. But keep my eyes on it there. It's keeping my eyes on Ducky. Are they Lance and Leviathans? And it just happens to him every time. Uh, the Ducky right now should be screaming, Gold Fury, Gold Fury, Gold Fury. There's three he over is. here. Hounds are at the Fury. There's got, Leviathans got to know that they're going to be losing out on this one. They get their kill. That's great. And Leviathans probably say that that is worth the risk that they were willing to take. Gold Fury for Ducky's life. What more can Leviathans get from this? They already took the Pyromancer, and I'm going to go for the Tier 1 tower. They just said, okay, full collapse onto Ducky. I guess his life is worth a Gold Fury to them. I mean, they've got an hour of in-game time of going for that exact play and not being punished for it. I, I can't fault the Leviathans for attempting it once more. And there is some nuance there with Shinto now knocking down the tower. Blue buff invaded, one for zero trade. In exchange for Gold Fury on the other side. It's it's a relatively even trade. Maybe the Leviathans. Can you pull up the charts, Doug? Help me out a little bit here. I mean, it, it, it's it's about a, a net neutral trade, it, it would seem. I mean, all those dips equalize right after that Tier 1 tower. I don't hate it. I don't love it. It's just something that happened. Catching Fine OK back up. Not exactly the worst thing on the planet either. It does delay the game a bit, though. Now the Leviathans have to... Wait a bit longer if they do win on a team fight to look towards an objective. I'm sure the Elgin Town's very happy with the idea of not having an objective on map for the Leviathans to force that team fight on either. Leviathans will give up the beacon over to the Elder Town. Second beacon now done. Another five minutes and we'll see that third and final one spawn back up, at least for its first rotation of the beacons. Haven't really had a game so far today. Need to go beyond that that second or that first rotation of them. Usually games are ending by that 27 to 30 minute mark. That's kind of just been the general pacing of our matchups from week number one, uh, aside from a, a couple of stray games that might go 35 40. This has been about the timing for most of our matchups in the SPL since kickoff and week number one has been this 27 30, maybe 35 if we're pushing it a little bit. Style if it's a Jade Dragon set, yeah. yeah. If it's a Dragon set, oh, spot out in the jungle. Hit by the Screech from adapting. It's a good poke. The Leviathans, they're, they're fishing for anything. They're going to steal away the chest camp, take Chester off the map. Not really in a position to go for the fire like they were in game number two, though. No, and Panda Cat, I think, the, the biggest indicator of that is just not interested in rotating out. We'll spend his time on the left-hand side. There's a little bit more you have to think about with a Jingwei for Vaporish Coast. Even if he shows himself on left, back to base, fly over to right, he'll get involved on a Pyro or Fire Giant fight very quickly. So if Panda Cat wants full value here, 
it's look for PvP, look for any sort of engagement he could find. That would have been a great opportunity with Coast showing himself on wave, but perhaps a bit of a bait. Oath's hovering the left-hand side of the map, J-Mag. A pick on a Panda Cat now? I mean, it could be massive. It's like 40 seconds on the grayscale. Fire Giant's not exactly easy for the Hounds, but if Panda's off the map, it's as close to easy as you'll get. See a group up around Pyro for the Hounds. Leviathan's on the way. Pyromancer and pull in a teleport channel as well. It's by Ducky. He's first on the scene. The Hounds do get the Pyromancer. It's well played. He'll immediately bail out. Ducky gets the push on the wrong you, but he gets stunned out instantly. Now Panicat has joined the fight. And he's got a lot of damage already swinging back, but he gets hit by the bomb stun, bomb follow up. Really? Or step into the sky. We'll get some good damage off, but felt like maybe the ultimate necessary. Didn't want to use beads or Aegis, I guess. I mean, I don't even think he needs to do either. Take one bomb, back up, life steal it. Could have been an option for him instead. Valkyrie's discretion does make him a target. Oh, no. Oath. Dead in the air. I believe that's a blue stone and crusher proc that takes him down. Neoma in the sky. Knockup misses by Ducky. Neil goes for the ultimate. He's got to find three. It's only going to be Final K pulled in and a kill for Ducky. And now I push Leviathan's back. But Adapting gets grabbed. Has to use the beans to get away from Chain Coast. And Benny just do a little too much damage. And even with wrong, you stepping up. That's not enough. Benny Q. Takes down one, about to grab a second one. It's a double for Ducky. Shinto's got a lot of damage. Neil Machel might have been his one saving grace. Man, Ducky's getting so much done. Pool just barely off the mark, but Panicat not out of it just yet. Vapor is crossed. Credit for the kill. There needs to be some anti-heal. There needs to be an answer for Ducky. This is very clear a Hercules diff right now. The pools have been on point. The punches are there. The space is created. We saw Panicat full channel his entire stamina to Ducky and he was just fine. Anybody else gets hit, this Freya looks real good. Unfortunately, he's hitting the Hercules, and so the Elder Towns went out cleanly on that team fight. 20 seconds of the grayscale until Panicat's back in the realm of the living. Five strong for the Hounds, and the Leviathan scattered to the winds. Fire Giant's not going fast. It's fast enough. We'll see if Fine OK can slow him down. Don't teeter around Fine OK. He was able to bail out long enough for Leviathan's last time. Fire Giant down to a quarter HP. Oh, All bombs expended by Benny Q. Fire Giant low, secured by the Hounds, but the team fight after. It's already Benny Q off the map. Neil Ma, half HP, forced out, but adapting, blinks in. Gets the screech, but gets hit by the knockup. Can't continue the chase on Coast, but still let's go for Neil Ma. Double kill for Shinto Ducky who's been so survival this Ooh. game. He's caught between a rock Can't and a hard move. place. He has literally nowhere to go, but there's Door no stuck. damage being pumped into him until just now. Finds a triple push and what? a triple dunk by Oath. The turnaround by the Eldritch Hounds. It has been a massive swing. Vaporous Coast takes out adapting. Ducky finds another pick back on fine. Okay, and it's a double for the kid. Man, that is just ridiculous. Ducky is unkillable. The The... The Iron Mountain out of the solo lane. You need Sunder. You need some anti-heal. You need more damage. You needed Panda Cat, if we're being honest. And even then, might not have been enough. Ducky's healthy. He's legitimately healthy right now. What is your answer? Hit someone else. Hit anyone else. Who is hitting him during that wall? Like, Everybody. There were four they people. They all had to have been hitting and him. And his health bar didn't move. It stayed right there the entire time. I mean... Adapting doesn't have the most percent pens stacked up just yet. We're still waiting on a little bit from Shinto as well, so that'll help out a bit. But I think Anti-Heal really needs to come into the equation sooner rather than later. Brawler's Beat Stick, Divine Ruin if you can, Contagion. I don't know, it's too late now, an Ankh. Literally anything. Sunder. It's not Anti-Heal, but it'll make him killable. Literally anything. Because as it stands, I've seen enough. Any damage that goes into Ducky is worthless damage. He, he's just going to shrug it off. He did. Gets a triple push for a massive dunk by Oath afterwards. I mean, that was clip worthy. Put that on the reel. That, that's what we've been waiting for the entire set. Oath gets spoon fed a quadra dunk, man. That, that, I mean, it does not get easier than that. <laughs> Hand delivered, wrapped up in a, in a nice little bow for him and everything. The Elder Towns now with their first real lead of the set. So far, 6,000 gold and climbing nearly 7K for the Eldritch Hounds. Gifted to them by Leviathans trying to funnel every ounce of damage they had left in the tank to Ducky, and he just shrugs it off without so much as a care in the world. 
Ducky walks up, finds out a pick on to Final K. This has just been consistent from him all game long. And Final K has got to try okay. and heal back up. Look at the damage that Benny Q is starting to get online for himself. Yeah, Typhon's Fang power spike for Panicat, proving now that he does pose at least a little bit of threat towards Ducky. Unfortunately, still no answer to that sustain. 2-2 two, two tower. Should be an easy pickup. Slow going, but eventually does fall. Leviathans keeping some semblance of presence towards the center of the map. Need to play cautiously, though. Massive rotation from the Hounds towards the left-hand side. They want to make contact with that Titan soon. All the while... Adapting, doing what he said he would do in game two. It's just split pushing, stealing farm, staying as far away from the team fight as possible. Titan from the Leviathans will mosey on past the Hounds and then immediately fall after full health Titan. But the Hounds still pushing down the lane. Tier two tower, foregone conclusion for the Eldritch Hounds. I'll knock that one away. Now five strong, Oath sitting to the left-hand side. Or I should say the right side of the jungle. Adapting will now go back to base. The, the, this Phoenix is not living very long. The Elder Towns have removed that one just as quickly as when they walked up. Wrong you. Walls off Benny. Gets pulled back by Neil Ma. And the damage is not quite there just yet. Adapting tries to bat some right back, but doesn't have very much left. Left side Phoenix gone. The best one for the Hounds because this Fire Giant's about to spawn back in. That is as good of a Fire Giant power play as you could ask for from the Elgin Towns, and I think they play it very well. Leviathan's, of course, a little bit late on the uptake. We're not five stacked on the left side Bird 4 defense, but even had they been, it's not exactly a base defense composition. You don't have the, the best ability to keep those waves out. Your poke potential is relatively low compared to what the Elgin Towns have got. This Agni can just pepper you with damage from range, and Best Shinto can offer as a Pyro class from range. And, it's not exactly a whole lot. So the Leviathan's best defense, should the Elder Towns get Fire Giant again, is a good offense. Full on, spearhead, jump into that back line, deal with Vaporish Coast, deal with Benny, and then deal with the consequences a little bit later. You're almost always going to trade out at least one for one. I don't see Shinto surviving many of these fights. But just letting the Elder Towns knock down that bird, I think, perhaps the, the worst answer they could have devised. And now, with minion waves already starting to move in towards the Leviathan side of the map, we're about 10, 15 seconds away from them leaking in towards the base. Fire Giant's already back up. All the Hounds need to do from this position is keep up pressure, and they will start to passively win on map. Fine, okay, heads back to base, upgrades his starter. And the Hounds have advantage around the Fire Giant, one of their first advantages this entire set that they have now had up against the Leviathans. They got fire last time, lost a couple. They can now group back up once more. The question is, will there be a response from the Leviathans? This oh, can't gets happen. picked off in the jungle. And all that lead that they could have had potentially squandered away because now the Leviathans starting to collapse back in. Yeah, Oath has just been caught out too, too many times now in that jungle fight. And it's been Shinto each time that's hunted them down, found them, and secured that kill. Leviathans, though, still not out of the fire just yet. Still need Final K pushing out those waves on left. Does have teleport. Should be able to join his team. Would take a little bit. Not fully upgraded. Has to go to that tier 2 tower on right if he does decide to make that teleport happen. So the Leviathans, I think, just happy to, to get a bit of a breather there. It was the Elgin Hounds with every bit of advantage. I do not want to understate it. All the Hounds really needed to do was group up his five, pull the fire giant, generate threat, force a fight. That was the entirety of the goal. And force Final K to rotate out, allow that mini wave to push up. Oath in just falling down may not have cost them the Fire Giant. They'll get a chance again, the Elder Towns that is, to try for the neutral objective. One more play like that, though, Phoenix is back up. Another one afterward, Fire Giant does go to the Leviathans. These small mistakes start to build up. The gold lead, not crazy enough to, to allow for a, a large margin of error there. Still need to play it well if you're the Hounds. On start of fire. They pop the frenzy immediately. Ha fire shots. It's already down to a quarter. Wrong use. The only one in position to try and steal this one away, but it's good. he's not willing to walk into the fire this time. Elder Towns. Quick pull on the fire giant. Melt the health bar down. Secure the buff for all five once more. Left side Phoenix. Still about a minute till it respawns back in. The Elder Towns now have some time. Start pushing up the mini waves on right and get stacked up for their next siege. Yeah, Fido K is going to try and knock down maybe one more wave after the one he's currently working on, and then get back to that Phoenix as quickly as possible instead. We just this wave, we'll get ready. I thought that tier two tower would act as enough of a buffer to get him the time for one more. Instead, 
It's all about this defense. Remember, it's not about this long, drawn-out battle for the Leviathans. They want this to go as quick as possible. And here's the thing. Adapting for Ducky trade it is perfect for the Leviathans. Ducky has been the difference maker. Ducky has the teleport, but is more concerned with this kill on adapting. Missed the push, missed the pull this time. But now Oath is on the way. 2v1 would be great, but adapting is just buying time for the rest of his team. Chained up for two. Does get two ultimates. Neil Ma happy with that trade, adapting back to the base. He's bought enough time for the Phoenix to respawn in left, but he hasn't bought enough time for the Phoenix on right side. Nope, that one is gone. A few enhanced from Coast. We'll take that one off of the map. It'll be a Phoenix trade out, but you still have one more fire minion wave to be dealt with on left. As the Hounds push into mid, Leviathans, where will they'll step up B? Will they even try and go for the full defense? Wrong you. Anxious to get that wall out there, but holding on to it for another fight. Oh, just Hounds. I've already done about 50% of this mid Phoenix. Left side bird is back up, but on 50% as well. Leviathans, I mean, the longer it goes, the squishier they get, so it's an all in. Beats from Coast, ultimate from Shinto, clips the wall, but he's still getting some damage, but now he's being collapsed back on. You dive into three, the three dive right back, and Oath crashes in just for good measure. Mid Phoenix gone, right side gone, left. Just a couple more in hands, because it is a weakened Phoenix. Coast can walk right in with the team, take that one down. And now the Leviathan's fighting with no birds left. Yeah, I thought the Leviathan's would would really commit a bit more there. Final K holds on to his own ultimate. Panicat's too far to deal damage. Has the ultimate for this. Keeps him alive for a moment, but just uh, a moment. Well, Final K hit four people with ult, and all four of those people turned and said, okay, what else do you got left? The Eldritch Hounds. They have turned this game back around. They've kept this set alive, and they will push it into game four. This one much, much better from the Elgin Towns. Proactive play across the map. Presence in the side lanes. Big bounce back performance from Oath. Ducky, of course, I think, been playing very well the entirety of this set. I, I got to give him credit. Has been a silver lining for the Hounds this entire time. This time, though, has the backup around him to really make use of the survivability. That Hercules, a massive detriment. I wonder though, J-Mac, how different some of those team fights look if there's any anti-heal in play. I, I keep going back to that moment, because that's uh, for me, that's, that's the moment the that point. entirely turned this game around. I think it was that wall was just too close to the actual jungle wall, and Wrong Yu was body blocking the whole team out of damage potentially. Because so? there he Maybe. Meant, there was not a lot of room there. And you gotta break those crack walls down. Like Freya can't get in close because there's a there's a Kabrak in there. The Pele can't get close. Adapton can't get in there. I think legitimately wrong. You may have accidentally just blocked Ducky in and left him there. Maybe I'm not so we sure though. They, I'm sure we'll have some sort of replay of it. But itemization needs to change. The Leviathans, Eldritch Towns, no changes. More of that, please. Yeah, Eldritch Towns look great here on their turnaround for game number three. They win out and they push over to game four. That's coming up right after this break.
backs against the wall, odds against them, bets against them as well. I think it was like 15 people or something, 17 people in chat just got a massive they won payout from like 4 million other points spread across them. Uh, and the Hounds managed to take that game. We'll break into it in just a second, but you'll see. We have a, a whole plethora of things right here. But the thing right there in the middle uh, and what you just saw coming into this, the E-Shell Shaker from Advanced GG. If you're sitting around and, you know, at least if you're like me, you probably didn't get enough sleep because last night you stayed up too late because you really wanted to watch a show that you wanted to and stop paying attention to the clock. Well, the good news is that you can get some beverages and, and, and I guess in this case, like the flavors that will then mix up with some water in these beautiful shakers, this E-Shell shell shaker to be able to find the energy that you need to get throughout the day which i am honestly starting to maybe desperately need because of the aforementioned lack of sleep uh but you can go and get the e-shell shaker now go to advanced.gg and find it there as well as use code spite for 10 percent off on any of your purchases there with advanced gg so thank you to advanced gg for partnering with us here in season x thanks to you for going out and buying our fantastic products to the point where we're we, I mean, at this point, it's like last man standing, I think, for E-Shell. And so go knock it out. And then, and, and then we're, well, actually, then we got to start scrambling. But I guess that's a good thing. That's a good uh, we point. got inbound up here. And inbound, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to throw you under the bus. I think you do. No, I actually actively don't. It's, it's usually actually bad form on the host <laughs> to ever do that. But you also did say, I, I think your exact words were, if the Hounds win this, uh, it's going to be huge for them because, uh, you know, as going into it, you liked the draft from the Leviathans better. Last two games, the play from the Leviathans better. Uh, I mean, almost everything it felt like. If you could stack it up against the Hounds, it felt like it was there. Yeah, and I think highlight 100%. In my opinion, at least, that's still a game that was difficult for the Hounds to win, and they took it in pretty, I mean, good form. I think the Levi still fought back. It wasn't a blowout or anything. But that mid-portion of the game, which highlighted was the strength of this Hounds comp, they played it very, very well. And highlighting on top of that, this Hercules was a problem. They could not kill him. They could not deal with him. His CC was all too much. Yeah. And the big turning point, as we all have probably talked about or heard by now, was the massive, massive dunk that Oath had on top of Ducky baiting four people who spent, how long would you say, 10, literal 10 seconds in game trying to kill him where he was not moving. And, and Oath just came in big, got a huge cleanup kill. That this one right, right here, uh, absolutely huge. And that was kind of like the game turning play. The Hounds had a little lead, they got this Fire Giant. But if Oath isn't here on time, even like a second or two seconds later, Ducky's dead and there's no Thor opportunity there. I actually have to give the shout out to Vile for the replay on that one because it wasn't just, you got to see everything. You got to see Ducky where he's standing and, and just controlling everybody into a massive dunk from Oath into the land in shots from, from Coast. I mean, that vision, that, that, that camera shot from, from Coast was the perfect angle to find that because you got to see, uh, like you said, I mean, that's, that's catastrophe. That's where it crumbles for the Leviathans. Up to that point, uh, you have some back and forth, but Ducky lives so long there. Uh, keeps going. And KDAs, I mean, you look at him, it's not that crazy. Uh, I also have to give the, the credit to Oath where it is due. Uh, maybe he's fueled by spite. And if so... He heard me talking. Yeah, he, he was listening to the death segment. But that was a much better Thor game than we got to see. Uh, what was it? Just get... I mean, well, it's that ult, really. You could maybe even isolate the rest of the game. I don't care about it. That ult does so much for the team that I, I can ignore everything else that happened. Yeah, I mean, just that fight alone was all he really needed to do, because at that point, the Jingwei is now huge, Ducky's unkillable, they cannot deal with Ducky at almost any point. And then, I mean, late game, I don't think Oath did very well. He kind of yeah. got soloed a couple times by Shinto, or uh, the, the adapting on the camo is also cleaning him up a little bit, but it was good enough. And sometimes that's all you need. Sometimes good enough is all you need to then build the confidence to have an even better next game. And that is something that's going to have to be in the back of the Levi's head. Well, I don't think you have to worry about the Thor, even after that game. I think there's some other things that should be, you know, prioed. But it's just going to be something in the back of the head where if we group up, there's going to be a four-man Thor alt waiting for us. And that changes the pace of things. One of the big bands that I guess realistically to, to strip away what the, the Hounds were doing, or sorry, what the Leviathans were doing, was that Athena. And that's what I was curious if they were going to go back to it. As Hounds, game four. Four games in a row to be first pick is honestly very impressive for them. Uh, they're batting 33% now after that win. So, so they can maybe wrap it up to, to 50. Oleron, Set, Athena, Chernabog, 
Ares, which was the first pick, and the Hercules, which was the unkillable pick, both stripped away from the Hound. So a lot of things still open, but a lot of their powerhouses stripped away. And I think they they isolated who they think the problems were. I think the Ares, the early portion of the game worked out really weird, where one back by Panda Cat on that Freya actually put him off from the purple buff timing and they got invaded. And from there he was behind and uh, Jingwei, who's behind a Freya, can able to, is able to just ja dash in for pretty free. So I think that's still like a fine thing. Ares gives a lot of pressure over there. So I think it's a good band, same with the Herc. Hound's opt for the Emoja first pick. We saw it game one. The Emoja looked really good. I actually think Neil looks fantastic on the Emoja. I think the comp drafted around the Emoja and the comp that the Levi's picked was also very hard for Neil to play into. And the Levi's kind of go back to it a little bit. That Cerberus matchup, not too easy for the Emoja. And they also go with the Amaterasu. A couple usual solo laners will probably have to be Cerberus support at this point. I was going to ask, like, actually, I was going to even use your name and your, you specifically because the, I think the one time, or at least the few times I remember Ama support in recent years, you were the one playing it. So do you, in, in this case, you prefer probably Cerberus over there than the Amaterasu? Uh, from what I've seen, yeah, I think builds mostly favor what Serb would kind of look for a little yeah. bit more. Even with how strong Shogun's is and playing around objectives with Ama, I think can be really good. I, I think Ronnie makes me think Cerberus support a lot more yeah. than Ama. I, I wholeheartedly endorse that. <laughs> and, and honestly, I'm a little ashamed I even brought it up. I but, love Ama. I love yeah. Ama. Well, but, in support. In support, really. Yeah. Do you well, think, okay, this is this is like interview time. We're, we're taking it separate. Is it something that could maybe like work in ranked way more than it would work like in, in SPL? I think it's more of a strength of a comp. I think if you okay. draft a comp that walks to objectives and can play around objectives a lot better, I think it's easier. Uh, I don't think there's a lot of objective-based comps right now. We have a lot of assassin mids, yeah. which Alma doesn't really facilitate. help or yeah, yeah, facilitate them very much. Uh, Hounds now going back for the Thor. This is now the fourth Thor game in a row. I I'm still a little apprehensive towards the Thor. I still think that it's just something that has not looked all that great from Oath. You had four people lining up, and that was the magnum opus that, that, that Oath has had this entire set, was four people trying to kill Ducky, and that was just about it. Nothing else has really stuck out to me to, like, kind of prioritize this Thor again. Even waiting towards the second half and picking a Pryo God here would be something I'd prefer a little bit more. But they offer the Thor, they offer the Horus. And we have a couple kind of weirder type of uh, picks. We have Ama Serb who are mostly solo laners, so one of them is gonna have to flex out a solo. And then we have Yumoja Horus, mostly both supports. Source has some flex potential to solo, just like Serb has to support. So a couple different solo laners or different supports that we haven't seen a lot of. We've not seen a Serb support in years and we've yeah. not seen horror support i mean i guess we've seen it somewhat recently but still is proud a little bit more towards support i think and then ryzen last pick for the levi's it did eat a small nerf in this patch alma same mm -hmm. thing also ate a small nerf but both still very very strong in what they can do now it's in been interesting looking at like I guess overall win rates. First off, that last game for Oath put him at a 50-50 directly. Well, I think it's seven wins, seven losses on Thor. Uh, so that's always fun to see for him. Uh, but like you said, Ama, Raijin, where they're at. Because Ama had eight wins, four losses in the games that she was played. Uh, Raijin didn't see anywhere near as many games, but he's been losing slightly more. But it's, it's not really that huge of a deal. So we'll just have to see. Plus, Shinto, I, I bring this up every time that Shinto is the one on a Raijin, but... A 24 game win streak on Raijin. Like it was wow. 24 and 0. <laughs> or wow. I think he ended at 24 and 1 and out of a 25 like stint when Raijin was meta. And he is absolutely insane as it turns out when it comes to playing this god. We'll see if that carries over to the current day and age. I think that was back in season 8. Uh, Bance cycle through after that. Freya, Merlin, Kamazots, and Mercury. The first two by the Levi's, the last two by the Hounds. As Marty is getting hovered. And we have not seen Marty outside of mid in a little while. Though the merits that he would bring are still, you know, ult heavy. Do you think, I mean, after a lot of the nerfs, he fell down. I, I actually think I asked you this last week where you said he's like very much where he should be. Where sometimes he's good, but you're not picking him first anymore. Yeah. 
and I think it still is that. I think his weakness in ADC is he's a lot less safe because of how long the lane in. We don't have to talk about the Marty because they they hover it. Yeah. They they mess with us a little bit hovering the Marty and they, they opt my head, for man. yeah and they opt for the soul double magical backline for the Levi's, but it doesn't matter all too much when you draft someone like Serb who's shredding so many protections and then soul especially with that demo buff grip demo. Demo grip buff. Yeah. That's what it is. The demo grip buff. Uh, it helps Soul. Maybe she's going to opt for that. I, I know when we've talked about the Soul, Soul usually gets talked about as a full one shot type of mage instead of that auto attack mage, more so in the vein of Olo and Freya. So I'm curious to see how he opts to build this Soul. Disco locked in for the Hounds and On Her being hovered. We saw the On Her game one. It wasn't a great on her performance, I think just overall, I think the Levi's just kind of won that game. A couple bright spots here and there. But the on her pick, it allows you something that a lot of hunter picks don't allow other than like Olo, which is just yeah. such a dominant 2v2 where there's so much pressure out that you almost always have to be worried about just an auto two. It's not even a combo. It's just autoing and twoing from the on her, <laughs> which is like 250 burst damage at level three. And it's just always, you, you've got that threat from the on her and, and Coast really does like a pick like that. If it is a combo, it's like one of those combo in fighting games where you just hit the same button three times, It's but at one point you hit two and, <laughs> and then click as opposed to just clicking. Uh, the damage will be there, and that's going to be, like you said, a, a very interesting prospect. I'm excited to see the Discordia. It feels like we only see that from a very few mid laners, uh, unless she's just absolutely bonkers good. Right now she's maybe in that good spot uh, where she gets to slip through. While the Leviathans finish up their draft, though, I'm kind of curious, especially depending on what they lock in. It looks should be adapting stick. Horus, you know, with the Yamoja, to me means that we're going to see Ducky playing it. How does that match up into to something like a Matarasu? Because I know, you know, when we see Haddix playing it, you have to add, like, the Haddix factor, which is just it, something that's incalculable, it feels like. But it feels like this has been a pick that has slowly been on the rise in solo for, for Horus that sometimes he's really good at, but Ama was, like, the god to play, and so it feels like it should be kind of difficult. Yeah, Horus just wants to be able to pressure you out through kill potential alone. He's got really, really, probably the best setup in solo lane for ganks. So much CC, a lot of damage, and a proc shred. So he's got really good gank setup. His farming potential is there once he gets the gooseberries online. He doesn't really clear waves all that well. He just kind of autos them down. A god like Ama needs to walk up to the wave. So it comes down to, is Horus going to be able to output enough damage for Ama's healing to not matter? I don't think so. I don't think there's enough pressure onto this Ama. I think she's such a safe pick. She, Even if she gets poked, she's going to be able to sustain a lot of it up with the death toll and her one. And then once it gets to that, you know, even early middle portion of the game where she finishes that gooseberries, she's just going to be power farming. I think the horse is mostly picked for that team fight aspect, which Haddix has per that's what he's perfected. Haddix's team fighting and ulting presence with the Horus is usually spot on. And if Ducky can kind of, you know, use use the Horus kind of like Haddix would in those late game team fights, there's a lot of pressure on that team fight that the Hounds have, and the Levi's have to be very, very careful around that. It'll be something fun to watch. Sisano is always fun to watch as well. Well, I. Susano is. <laughs> I guess it not, depends. Yeah. yeah. When he's diving you he's and. He's flashy. He is fl from the top down. Flashy, yeah, yeah. But yeah, when you're in the game, even when he's on your team and he's doing super well, I could, yeah, I could see that maybe not, not completely like lock it in for you. Yeah, he, he's, he's also just a scary god for like support because you like are walking through the jungle and then he just pulls you into his entire team and then you just get blown up. And you ever try to lock him down and you're not locking him down, mm -hmm. he's always gone. Just have flashbacks to some of these characters, and Susano is like one of them. Just terrifying. You know what? The good news is like now you get to, to be in the part, the view that enjoys what Susano can do, which is the pullbacks, the knockups, uh, the CC. Discordia as well, like you've got very, very, very minor mobility, but it feels like someone that could get bullied pretty hard. Yeah, especially because, I mean, if Ryzen dash is on her, she doesn't have the distance capabilities that Ryzen has with his dash. Hers is. 20, 30 units or something like that, and Ryzen's is the, the full 50. So it's a scary matchup for Disco, but she does have good burst return. She also has that long form of CC immunity, not nearly yeah. as long as Ryzen, but it's long enough where she can maybe even burst him through that. Uh, the one thing I did miss out on where maybe that solo lane is a little more difficult, uh, Disco passive in solo, maybe that's something we have to oh, look out good for. Point. 
something that we have to keep our eyes on. Plus, like you mentioned, I, Strife is one of my favorite CC abilities in the game from Discordia. We'll see how well it works here. Can the Hounds push us to five? Are the Levi's going to close it out here in game four? We'll find out with the casters. Yeah, we're not going to start our weekend with a 3-0. Instead, we're going to move into game number four now with the Hounds and the Leviathans. It's J-Mac, Mifflin, and Doug back to here to bring you game four for our squads. And for the first time this set, Mifflin, Shinto not going to be playing one of the Assassins. It was set. Pele for the next two games after that. Now moving over to Raijin. Finally left open. And Shinto decides that he wants to pick up the drum drum. Dude, I, Also, I, Pele not picked her band, by the way. Yeah. Also, by the way, we're, we're now Twitch economy ruined. The Hounds did oh, it. They, they yeah. actually did it. Some people trying to double dip on that success, it seems like, because the fans are now behind them at closer to 40% as opposed to the 15% they had previously. I don't know, though. I like both these compositions a lot, J-Mac. I really do like uh, the Elder Towns and what Benny Q is going to do. Discordia passive, I think, maybe the most slept-on passive in the game. Just having a little bit more power. Always going to be very valuable. I think, though, for the most part, we're probably just going to see that passive on Ducky, right? Golden Blade Horus just has really good poke, so... Could control that Discordia passive a bit throughout the early portions of the game. I'll be keeping my eyes on the dual lane of the Elder Towns. It's hyper-aggressive from them. A kill lane, to be sure, between on her and Yamoja. That's not to say that there isn't a ton of pressure on the other side. Leviathan, Cerberus, and Soul. I mean, early game. We saw it from, like, phase one, week one. Gladiator is what Soul can do to structures so early. One Yikes. pick, one good fight. Panicat might be able to knock down a tower. Ducky doesn't even need the Golden Blade yet. Just bully Fine OK out. At least for the time being. Now Fine OK does have access to heal. Pop that first ability, swap over, get a little bit of that HP back. Lather, rinse, repeat. Should keep him alive, but Ducky is trying to deny as much farm as he can. Denied one minion. Which is as much as he can for That's now. Right. But with a strong advantage wave, Fine OK will be just fine. Ducky going to focus on the totem instead. And I kind of want to point it back to Rachinto. Because if we dial back to when I first started jumping up into, into casting SPL, Yikes. Yikes. this was Shinto's pick. Raijin was the, the meta. He was the god to go to in Season 8. And then he got nerfed heavily. We never saw him again. Now Raijin's back in the meta. I'm surprised players let, let Shinto get this, considering it was a pick that he was so dominant on, Beads away from adapting, but I mean, this is a pick that he went like 24-1 and one on in, in a season. It, it is shocking how good Shinto was on this pick when that god was in the meta. Just very aggressive. You got to know your spots. You got to know your damage intimately. Uh, Raijin very good at all-in, but we've seen Raijin all-in in the past, and people slip away at 10%, and Raijin's not exactly got the best self-peel after he's dedicated his kit. So Shinto very good at situations like that. We'll be a little while, I think, before we see that hyper-aggressive play, though. Shinto and Pagan come to my mind as some of the premier Raijin players as of recent. And it's it's very different styles. Whereas Pagan gets over to level 3 and he says, I'm in there, I'm jumping in, I'm making plays, I'll be in the speed buff, I'll do whatever you need me. Shinto's a little bit more second item slanted in, in how he likes to play. So we're, we're on a little bit of timer there before we get to see the full value of Raijin out of mid. And we might see that reflected a bit in the jungle as well, adapting not exactly one to, to camp out the mid lane uh, as opposed to some other junglers. So for now... <laughs> Just spin your wheels, collect some farm, and we'll check back in in about three or four minutes. I think maybe it is a little surprising that we do see, you know, with the introduction of gooseberries, the fact that some of these soul are still going over to the golden blade. kind of felt like once that item popped in, you know, once that recipe jumped up, we'd probably be seeing less of it, but instead, Dougie's still going to go for the golden blade, instead work on a bountiful bow for his recipe as a purple buff invaded by the Leviathans. Doesn't get stolen away just yet. Impale from Coast actually secures that one by pushing one of the Leviathans through the buff. And you go ahead and throw a nice little taunt. Try to three-man invade. He didn't get anything for it. No, not this time. Great play by, by, by Vaporish Coast there. Just to secure his own buffs. But that pressure mounting from the Leviathan to the duo lane should probably pull the attention of Oath sooner rather than later. It is much easier to shut down a soul in the early game that it is a Freya just because she doesn't have that instant self-banish. The Saparate, of course, still a phenomenal self-peel tool. It has a little bit of timer on it, a little bit more difficult to utilize that at a moment's notice. So I would like to see Oath over there. Gone towards Thor four times in a row. Hands got to be warm by now. I mean, four-man dunk in the previous game, I think, does wash away 
some of the concerns that we had building up through games one and two. But it's not about game three. It's always about the, the most recent game played. So I'll be keeping my eyes on Oath. Would love to see them keep up that pressure because I think that is one of the major turning points for the Elch Towns was Oath's ability to get involved in those side lanes. It was much higher in the last game. Could be that he tries to recreate some of that magic here. Yeah, kept things a lot closer in game three all the way up until that turning point. Because when that, like, even though the Leviathans were super far ahead, it was maybe a couple thousand gold by the time that that ducky oath combo play comes up. Then the Hounds get all the momentum that they need. He went out game number three. So keeping it close here in game number four, ideal, but I tend to agree with you on, on the, the sentiment towards oath getting a bit more active. Now that he's got the level five, you got the Jotun's Wrath. See him try to go over one of these sidelines. Get get anything. Get a beads away from Panda Cat. Something away from the mid. Instead, it's pressure to the left side for the Leviathans. Vaporish Coast has his beads. Jumps away from Wrong You. Wrong You. Misses out on the stun this time. Vaporish Coast thinks he's okay. Uses a quick ult and cancel to get away from Adapting's pull. I mean, that's resources burnt immediately. Vaporish Coast already struggling the 1v1. Will now struggle a little bit more so without that CC immunity and ultimate available to him. So next rotation might find a little bit more value, but anytime you dedicate this much time to one side of the map, the enemies generally get something done on the other side. Blue buff invaded there by Oath on the right. But this, this is wishful, isn't it? It's so early in the game. Really early, and without your oh, they have carry no too, idea. because Panda Cat, he just now has shown his it's just face. Happen. Shinto rotates in as well. Gold what? Fury. Five minutes and 40 seconds to the Leviathans. That might be one of our earliest Gold Furies we have had in a very long time, Miff. I mean, it, it, it makes some degree of sense. You're assuming that Vaporish Coast has got nothing left in the tank. He's probably headed back to base, low mana. Needs to finish up that Devourer's Gauntlet. Was sitting on the, the Curse Gauntlet in that second slot. And so, knowing he's going back, you at least know the ADC isn't going to be there. But I'm not sure that Coast is even necessary. If Benny Q turns the corner this early in the game, Two-man strife, unruly magic, Gold Fury's got enough damage, that, that's probably a kill, just immediately. It's Leviathan, it's been their win condition this whole set. Heat check and objective, and if nobody shows up, take it, and now the challenge, we're not prepared for this one. That's what won them game one, so it was winning them game two. Game three's where we really didn't see a whole lot of that objective findingness from the Leviathans. Oh, fine, okay. Good. He's got dash, he's in the jungle for now. Ducky misses the slow. Fine, okay, able to get bailed out. Ultimate from Panda Cat. Doesn't get anything this time, but Coast now without beads does have ultimate. Use it to immune wrong use, and again, immediately cancel it out. Stunned once more. But Panda Cat's a little too far back. Neil Ma doing a great job holding him out. And even Shimto's rotation, his ultimate expended, but that's because Oath showed up. Yeah, Oath up into the air, forced to get onto those back camps himself. Just farming up as best he can. Seems like the Leviathans ha have departed from their make it miserable to exist as ducky mentality and instead said, hey, what if we did it to Vaporish Coast instead? What if we just sent three ganks his way in seven minutes and Coast certainly struggling for it. Now at a slight deficit up against Panda Cat and I'm not sure there's going to be a significant turning point in that lane barring rotations from the Hounds. Soul just has really good self-sustain. She's got really good boxing potential. Vaporish Coast will have slight advantage so far as Lifesteal is concerned, the ability to heal on wave certainly there, but Soul will make up for it with inherent kit healing. Meaning that Panda Cat, if he were left alone on an island, if we got no more rotations from either team, I'm thinking Soul's got control from here. Level up for Panda. On the opposite end though, one level up for Oath. It's been consistently like that since about the level four or so mark. I believe Oath was first to five adapting Shortly to follow, but experience has still just been favoring Oath little by little. As you see Coast just keeping an eye on where Panda Cat's rotating. Maybe this is where Oath has been getting some of his XP lead. It's been these attempted invades. Go over to the green buff, see if anyone's there. Go to the back camp like we saw last game, steal something like that away. Just trying to keep his presence known on the map, while also at the same time trying not to be seen on the map too much. Now he's trying to be seen, wants to be perceived as he makes contact with Rong Gyu. Ronnie, though, had different goals. It wasn't about the fight. It was just creating space for the neutral camp while Panda Cat slowly works away at that. All the while, 
Vaporish Coast loses, I believe, two minions to tower there. Doesn't get the neutral farm. And it's the Leviathan. It's a small win on the left-hand side once more. I mean, you can even see it on the wards on map. Two sentries from the Leviathans. They want Panda Cat to be able to do whatever Panda Cat wants right now. He's got great vision on the left-hand side. He's got good aggression. He's already started to itemize some of that sustain himself, that Bancroft's tree. Vaporish Coast, clearly the target here. I mean, things will, will, will get a bit easier for Coast as he levels up that Gooseberries. His wave clear will go up significantly. Should allow him to play passively. But if there's anything we know about the Penta Kid, he doesn't want to play passive. And, and he's certainly not happy about the pace so far. And Master Tour, Coast doesn't at least get to box on ones that he doesn't like. He, he might even be losing a boxing match, but he wants to take those fights as often as possible. Wrong you, getting a nice chunk of damage to Neilma. A ghastly breath really starting to show its presence now. Just with the buff that it's gotten on that extra prot shred. Especially when nobody's really got any defense online. Benny Q pulled back. A lot of damage back to his name. Oath dunks in. Gets beads from Shinto and a Typhoon from adapting. Leviathans on the offense and immediately forced to be defensive. They are. Adapting will take a little bit more damage towards the tail end as well, but... Even then, I think an okay trade. Anvil of Dawn, the only thing that's going to catch anyone really unawares on map. So, burning beats from Shinto, significant, but Taiko Drum still there to prevent any CC that comes his way in the future. And adapting, just making sure that his ally makes it out alive. Stygian Torment, no good. A Porsche Coast should just be fine here. Wrong you, tanks a couple tower shots, adapting a little late to the party this time on another rotation. And Coast just sitting here going, God, is this like the fifth time they've popped into my lane? Maybe we, maybe we, you know, don't let them keep doing this, you but... Think, you think Coast complains and Ducky's like, dude, shut up. <laughs> like, <laughs> keep Ducky's it like, down, bro, buddy. I was there for three games. You could have it bad one time. Just let me have some fun over here for once. And he's having fun. I mean, Final K has not crossed that Tier 1 tower threshold in a good long while. I mean, already has the CDR, does Ducky. Golden Blade's going to keep you... Uh, very relevant on wave clear. Final K will, will start to feel a little bit better now that he's got that Berserker shield and some of that sustain from Death's Toll. But I don't think Ducky's all, all too concerned about it either. It just keeps his pressure up, denies as much farm as he can to the tower. Did they just do it again? Oh, no way. They, I think they just do it again. Wrong you's not there. No, they there. have to know. Yeah. Yeah, wrong, wrong you, while just standing there menacingly, was the tell that Leviathans were up to something. Coast and the rest of the crew now walk in. Stop the, the Fury from going any further than 10% like down. I wonder if there's a world where we see that OG soul lane swap. I mean, that's a very early tier 1 tower to have knocked down. It, it would not be the easiest thing on the planet for, for Panda Cat to keep pressure up now. I mean, if the wave's going to meet in the center of the map, clear that out pretty easily. But otherwise, won't be able to play too far forward. If you want to continue to leverage Soul's pressure throughout the early game, send Final K over the duo, have have Panicat become the new Soul laner, has an okay matchup as well into Ducky in that Ducky has not itemized whatsoever towards magical defense, could be an option. Again, it, it does speak to what, what the Gladiators were doing back in phase one. 4v4, Soul laners, MIA for this beacon, but I don't think Leviathan's with Half health on Panda or Wrong You want to stick around and try and fight for this one any longer. So the Elder Towns will get the first Stygian Beacon of the game. And with that rotation from Coast, trying to maybe leave the lane, get a, a breath of fresh air. Because he doesn't really have a tower to go back to. Let the wave stay closer to his side of the map if possible. Because we saw what Panda Cat's capable of, not just on the objective, when we saw that first Gold Fury at 540, but also that Tier 1 tower. It's the name of the game of Soul. She is, she is the, if it doesn't hit me back, or even if it does, make it to hit somebody else. But if it is standing there, I am killing it. Kind of a god. Yeah, very very sentry-minded, right? Uh, not like the ward, like the literal turret. So good at knocking down those, those PVEs, uh, be it structures or objectives. It's worth noting the Eldritch Hounds have been farming very well up until this point. No kills to either side, so it's just macro separating these teams. And that one team does have a Gold Fury and a Tower knocked down, but it's the Elder Towns that are still even to slightly ahead at times. But a 50 or some odd gold separating these two squads. So farm split for the Hounds has been very, very effective. The Leviathans, though, 
Maybe have eyes for their first potential engagement, but it's fine. Okay, dropped low first. Half HP adapting. Ghost with the dazzling offensive. He's bringing the fire giant into this mix. Ducky tries to dash away, but he's met by adapting. Pops the beads. One more hit to Ducky would do it. Jerong Yu's going to try and go in. He gets the ult, but a beads by Ducky keeps him alive. And it's a kill for Oath in the back. Takes out adapting, but it's a one for one trade. One for one, but first blood to the hounds, I believe. Ducky has just proven to be unkillable, and it's not a Hercules thing, it's a Ducky thing now. Just squeezes his way out of that engagement. All the while, Vaporish Coast keeps up his pressure and Duo should be able to knock down that Tier 1 tower, and actually puts himself in an advantageous position. For the first time this game, it's the on her with a level lead, and Coast with an opportunity takes as much as possible, not only the tower, but the purple buff as well. I think the Gold Fury, Primal, excuse me wishful thinking, but I had said the same thing at the five minute mark and it's still fallen down. That said though, Leviathans with so much vision on map would have realized the other towns were on it. That's a small reset there. That is a massive swing on board. One for one trade, but the the strongest power point for the Leviathans being that duo lane and how much control Panicat had, I mean, it's it's washed away. And, and now it belongs to Coast. Yeah, Coast a full level up over Panicat, who just now procked over the 14 to match. Or I should say, at least stay within one level to Coast. Otherwise, across the map, it's mostly been Shinto, who's been staying ahead for the Leviathans. Makes sense. Shinto has always been known as the power farmer of the SPL, no matter which jungle you, you throw next to him. He is going to be taking some of that farm. He's got to make sure to be the first person on his team to hit level 20. You need both speed farms? Like, you already got one nah. extremely Shinto voice. <laughs> That's your camp now? What if that one's my camp instead? These mid harpies? Those, those belong to me. You can go get the other one. You, you got two buffs on the opposite side. Oath. He's got an ult for adapting. Doesn't get this one. Just dunks back down in place. Bails out instantly. Maybe goes up to the sky and recognizes the Leviathan. Hey, no. What? Go to the fire? This is very wishful thinking for the Leviathans. The hounds know. The Leviathans, they don't, they don't want to stick to this one. They got to go for the fight instead. Fine, okay. Right to the back line. Maybe this just buy some extra aggro. space. Fire's only at half HP. Are it's you not serious? Not a whole lot. The Leviathans, they got to be committed now. The Golden Apple's been expended. It's on top of Panda Cat. Use the Supernova. The Leviathans get the Fire Giant. And Shinto and takes the, the first kill. It's Benny Q down. And Oath doesn't have ultimate. Remember, he started everything using it. This Ducky's is bad. being pulled around. Not enough healing this time. Double kill for Shinto. Neil Ma used the Riptide. That's not going to get him far. It's three for Shinto. Triple kill for the Leviathan's mid laner. And Oath stands by, noticing that Adapting's in the jungle. The Leviathans, they get away with murder. They take three kills and a Fire Giant. The Leviathan said, look, we've got a game to play with. You steal this Fire Giant, we might just throw the whole game. We get this Fire Giant, it might also just be the whole game. The Eldritch Hounds show up when fire's at 80%. They're there and present during the DPS, during the secure, during the fight afterward. And the Leviathans simply take everything. I would have to go back and watch that whole fight in slow motion. Uh, I, I could not glean the information that makes that so one-sided to the Leviathans. Just ridiculous. You you have to think it's Oath's ultimate that starts off that whole fight, just up the air, back down. A major tool loss, and Leviathans say, well, you're probably going to need that if you're going to win a fight against us. And they were right? They were right to tank the Fire Giant in front of them as well? I, I couldn't tell you, J-Mac. And all during that, Shinto picks up a triple kill, then we can actually take a look back and just see exactly what happened. How this fight went so well. Secures it. Benny's collateral gets a kill damage. On, ben, on Benny in the middle of the ult. Shinto gets dove onto the back line. Shell keeps him alive throughout all of that one. He essentially got to free cast that game. Had a couple of supports pop back around him, said, hey, we got you back. Shinto picks up a triple kill. It's a fury for the Leviathans on top of all of that. And now complete control of this map one more time. It was so well for, for the Hounds. Keeping even. It was 0-0 zero, zero for such a long time. Even the 1-1, one, one, it was a dead even game. Now 5,000 in the lead for Leviathans. Yeah, Levi's turned this game on its head on a dime. But the Eldritch Hounds had done a good job throughout the early to keep it relatively even so they could do as much as possible now. It's Benny Q on the chopping block. Golden Apple, no good. Beads will keep him alive, hopefully. But fine, okay. Different ideas. 
Eggis and Watch Shield out. keep him alive. Wrong you dunked on Oath. Removes the support from the Leviathans. Phoenix on the top side. Just Coast and Ducky trying to do with that. Adapting's all by himself. He's going to need some help. Might not be able to save this bird. Ducky going to go for the bailout. The body blocks from the in-hands. They're good enough. The Phoenix is still alive. Wow. But Coast and Ducky, they couldn't stick around any longer. Phoenix lives. Leviathan's forced the hounds out. I thought it was a major throw from adapting there. Had blinked the entire time. Could have gotten onto Vaporish Coast much sooner. Ducky connects that updraft auto attack, so does prevent the blink from being channeled. Adapting makes a split second decision to block out a few of those autos. And here's the thing about structures and smite, it's a zero sum game. That right side Phoenix might be weak, but it'll regen and there are no fire mini waves to passively push up. It's not gonna be easy for the Elder Towns to get back and in position to knock it down. I mean, with ward coverage as it is, Ducky could upgrade, teleport to that ward on the right-hand side and potentially try and knock it down, but certainly not easy. Leviathans, that would have been a massive swing for the Hounds. Great play by Adapting to keep it up. Rick Bomb used. Tier 2 tower removed. Leviathans continue to push their lead. 6,000 in climbing and gold, 5k in experience. All still relevant as... Well, said earlier, Shinto is going to be the one who wants to hit 21st on his team, and he is the only one to have hit 24 and 0 on the Raijin. Every single kill for his team so far here in game number four. The Eldritch Hounds, I mean, uh, Myth, what even is their answer? H how do you deal with, with Shinto who's essentially just been able to free cast this whole game? I mean, jumping onto Shinto is the only answer, right? Unfortunately, he's got Beads, Aegis, Ultimate all available, so... It'll be pretty difficult to do from this position, especially considering he's not just going to watch you. He's going to deal damage at the same time. And in a DPS race, I don't see too many options that are, that are going to be able to match up against Shinto. I mean, Oath can, can always be a difference maker on Thor. That, that just explosive potential of, hey, I'm in your backline. What are you going to do about it? There's a wall behind you now. It, it is so tough to deal with. But Shinto also like wins that 1v1 now, so some of that nuance lost, I believe. And even has even more CDR as he's upgraded his starter item. Answers in Smite so often are simple. Well, how do you answer Shinto? It's kill him. It's just figuring out how to do it. That's going to be the difficulty. I think the, the first answer, the first question the Elder Towns are going to have to answer is, are you ready to defend a Fire Giant again? Last time the Leviathans did it in your face from a much more even stance. This time 6k up. They might just do it in your face again. Well, the answer last time as well for the Hounds said, okay, you guys got Fire Giant. That's cool. That's great. They're going to let it go. But they did this exact thing. They sent players to opposite ends of the map said, okay, well, if you're going to do that, we're just going to split push, and then you have to come do something afterward. You can't just, you know, take fire and win out. So adapting and wrong you head over left. The Hounds aren't done, though. Adapting, adapting and wrong you probably going to go, all right, cool. They went into the jungle. They're good. They're done. Well, now they actually are because they are going to head back to base. But that's just because you got... A few members of the Leviathans knocking over onto the right side of the map. Put some presence there, but it's also the Leviathans. Head back, reset, and get ready for this next push. Only one tower left standing for the Elder Towns to defend, and then it's down to the Phoenixes. And now that we are on second Fire Giant territory, 22 minutes in, uh, a good lead for Leviathans. Uh, what's the siege defense like for the Elder Towns up against this Leviathans team? The Hounds have got a few avenues of defense available to them. If the fight goes long and it comes down to a poke battle, You've actually got pretty decent poke. Benning keep the waves out. Oath with double tap hammer walls should look pretty decent. If sustains a question, Ducky and Neil Ma will keep you relatively healthy. Or they could try and separate the fight and have Oath be like the solo agent, uh, assuming adapting plays the 4 1 split as the one, have Oath line up against him, and then the global presence, of course, could turn things around. So it's a much more standard defense from the Hounds. I think much more interesting is just how strong the siege is from the Leviathans. It will not take a whole lot of time for them to knock down a bird, given the opportunity. Panda Cat just needs to keep his passive stacked up. Rongu creates a little bit of space, and birds will fall fast. Leviathan's well, trying to push in for a siege. Big defense by the Hounds could keep things alive, but Leviathan's going to be a bit cautious on their siege. A bit slower on the push up, waiting for these minions. But as the next wave comes in, let's listen to the Leviathan's on this siege. <laughs> Yes, we got it. We got it. Uh, Are you guys okay? I found the jungle. Okay, okay, okay. Throw nothing, throw nothing, throw nothing. On Shito. I have frenzy that, frenzy that. Careful. Careful, careful, careful. Come on, group. Take we're good, we're good, we're good, we're good. I have beat, I have beat, help. Careful, boys. 
I'm ulting. Yeah, I'm ulting. Ult. We can disco. Look out, look out, look out. Look out, look out. Yeah. I hit them. Play together. You drove. Look out, look out. Careful, boys. We can lose here. You might lose here. You might They fucked the wall. They never lose. We never lose here. We're winning this game. We're still winning. Yeah. I'm healing. Joey on. Care for disco. Go disco. Go disco. Go disco. I think I'm trying to get Ronnie has stun. Oh, close. He's gonna die. Ankur, Ankur, Nagis. Honor is dead. Nice, nice, nice. Let's go jump in. Let's go jump in. Nice, nice. In the back door. Nice, nice, nice. Nice, Yo, this is gonna be low. You can maybe just do it, Alec. We can go. Oh, yeah, maybe we can I, can. I think you guys can go Phoenixes. Yeah. What even happened? You guys commit for that? Well, that fight started off so poorly for the Leviathan. Shinto gets nearly killed, and then a oath dunks in the back, and then adapting hits all five, five with man. Typhoon in a straight line shot to the entire team. Didn't say anything either. No, he just he just let it rip. He he Beybladed that Typhoon. He did clean play. The Leviathans love the communication. Shinto lets him know. Guys, look, if, if we lose this fight, we could lose the game. That's how synced up our death timers are. And then the, the confidence from fine. Okay, what do you mean? We never lose here. It just won't happen. We're winning this fight. And they're right to say it. Adapting gets the one-for-one one in the back line. Oath, of course, cleans him up from there. Fine, okay. And Ronnie, the frontliners, went out on their trade. But it is offset a bit, th this kill trade between these teams, by the structure difference. Left side, Phoenix is knocked down in all that pandemonium, and the Leviathans come out with a significant advantage going into the rest of this game. Man, I thought Oath maybe would have found him before that back was channeled, unfortunately for him. A little too slow and a little off the mark for adapting, so once more, Thor Ultimate no longer in play. Has plenty of CDR this time around, though, so we'll have it back up sooner rather than later. Leviathans, the communication. I mean, it, it has just been clear. But it, it's slightly different from the comms we hear from a lot of these other team fights and other teams. It's calling targets, calling individuals, where you want to look. These guys are, are broad and sweeping. This fight looks good, stick in it, and they just trust everyone to be on the same page from there. Yeah, I believe the exact phrasing in some of those were, we never lose these. We, we don't lose That's fine, this okay. fight. That's Alec Bonzo. That, that is three versus five. And, and maybe be, right. And maybe before that Typhoon hits, a little... Uh, I don't know about that one. And then adapting it's five. It's like, okay, no, they, they are right. They do not lose a fight like this. Even if adapting goes down, Final K still finds a double on the back line. Adapting even got one of his own before dying. And now Leviathan's in a great spot. Start moving over towards this next fire giant. Up in just a few seconds. With that left side Phoenix down. It's going to force at least one person to try and stay back, keep these waves pushed up, defend. The Elder Hounds might just do what they did last time on fire. They said, look, we can't win the fight on fire. We couldn't win when we were right there with them. Maybe we just give up this fire giant once more to Leviathans. I mean, the base defense looked good enough from the Elder Hounds that I think fair play to them if they want to give up one more fire giant. Enhanced fire giant is going to be a different conversation, but it's a conversation for later in the game. I doubt the Leviathans hold on to it for three minutes here. And so, one more fire in play. And Titans down the center of the map. I mean, the Leviathans... This is going to be a significant opportunity to them. They'll make contact with Titans first. They'll have Fire Giant on all five healthy. Relics are in a good spot as well. And Runic Bomb in pocket for fine, okay? Push with this Titan. Play with your pressure. We'll see how well the Alger Towns can stop this one. Fine, okay, heading right. He's got a lot of it. A lot of attack speed for himself and the Runic Bomb. He might just try and work and solo that Phoenix on right side himself. The rest of the team... Pushing up with the Titan in mid. All five of the Hounds here to defend. But no it's one's in. keeping eyes on Final K. Titan goes in, gets a little bit of damage on the bird, while Final K just decides, okay, well, no one's here to defend. I'll take a Phoenix for myself. And the Leviathans can once again group up. Left side is back online, but there's a fire minion wave on the way. And I don't think that Ducky has enough damage to defend it by himself. Shinto up in the ultimate. Gets a little bit of damage. Ooh. The Golden Apple misses everybody. It bounces back to them. And now Ducky's by himself against Five Panda Cat. Nearly goes down. Dunk back. back in by Ducky and Oath. The fight is back for the Eldritch Hounds. They've taken Panda Cat out of the equation. And Wrong Yu is next one down. May Porous Coast gets one as Shinto. Thunder crashes away from the rest of the squad. Trying to buy time. He gets stunned out. Uses the Aegis. But there's just too much follow-up damage. The Hounds, they defend their mid-Phoenix. But someone's got to go back and defend the Titan. Yeah, the Levi's, they, they knock on the door of the Titan room, get pushed back, and by the time they're low enough HP that they have to dedicate to a full retreat, the global presence of the Eldritch Hounds allows that chase down to go so, so smoothly for them. Horus delivers your team to the back line. Oath makes it happen on his own as well. And now it's the Eldritch Hounds with five. 
against the two remaining members of the Leviathans. Not enough time to end the game, even if they knock down this bird. But maybe enough time to find a little bit more value after. Oh, another golden apple. Well, they're Doesn't going for anything. it? It's five seconds for Panicat. He might have his ult by the time this he gets is dangerous. back in. Adapting, he hits a lot with the Typhoon. That's and it. And gets a kill. Panicat's back up. And it's another one taken out. Adapting goes down. But Finocase picked up the double. Panda Cat gets a double as well. The Leviathans hold firm. The Hounds stick around for too long. The Eldritch Hounds base defense looks so good. And the last two fights, this panic end. I mean, that's really the only way to describe it. Chito should just be dead here. Unfortunately for him, we'll spend another 60 seconds in the grayscale. But I'm not sure he's even necessary to knock down the Titan here. 50%, oh, wow. minion waves flooding in, a barely standing mid Phoenix, and three members of the Leviathans moving forward. And yeah, just out to defend. He used everything to kill Shito, so he's got nothing left for the rest of the Leviathans. It was a good fight back in game three for the Hounds, but it's the Leviathans in four. They take the set 3-1. Yeah, just a very panicky end attempt there from the Hounds. After what was a very back and forth late game. I love their base defenses. I love the wherewithal, the chase down potential. It's all there. The, 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 the gumption to keep the base standing as long as they did, especially considering, what was it? First Fire Giant, 16 some odd yeah. minutes, somewhere in there. It's really difficult to stay afloat and stay in and to stay active and competitive in a game like that. The Hounds certainly do it. Unfortunately for them, they can only do it for so long. And, and let's go back to that first Fire Giant. Cause that is a call that like I hope the desk could break it down no better than we other did. It made team, no sense to me. Like there's like no other team in this league that is making a play like that who is going in at a dead even. You see the entire enemy team step the up too. The whole time. The whole lot from like ninety-five percent of fire giant HP to zero. They knew they were there. And the Leviathan said, We're still just gonna take the fire giant and the fight after. It's not just that they got fired, they killed three people too. The Leviathan said heads or tails. I win. <laughs> yeah, it didn't matter which side the coin landed on. It's all Leviathans here. A 3-1 win for them. That's it for me and Miff on the cast. We'll throw it back over to the desk. Yeah, that first fire giant, uh, very impactful because the kills, I mean, we had been talking about like 13 minutes, no first blood. And then in the next three, you get a couple of kills, nothing too crazy. And then you win the fire giant and you get a triple kill if you're Shinto. That feels like a good way to start things off. Uh, if you're the Leviathans, and, and, and from there inbound, it just continued to go. Even towards the end, though, uh, we saw how back and forth that this set could be. And, and I guess some of the fight that we've been wanting from the Hounds, not just this game and last game, but like the whole set, I felt like they were finally getting there. And then unfortunately for them, it was that end call, you know, I think Miff used the term panicky, but sometimes you just got to go for it. And I... Unfortunately for them, they were unable to make it work. Yeah, I think the timing was just barely off. If you were tracking Susano's ultimate cooldown, it had literally just came up, and as it came up, he actually used it. And that ult hit everyone, except Coast, who ended up jumping it. But it was a really, really big cooldown. And it's not luck, it's just like he has full cooldown. It's going to be up eventually. I think their timing was maybe just slightly off, and they thought it was going to be down a little bit longer. But overall, the Hounds showed like more bright flashes. There was a really slow game, and, and when you think of the Hounds, a lot of it is usually more aggressive. And looking at this Fire Giant fight, it was just small openings that the Hounds used that allowed the Levi's to just exploit them. The Thor ult was used slightly before. Uh, Coast wasn't able to play up too far. Benny ulted slightly earlier to get damage out instead of looking for the steal. So then you think about it, you have an Amaterasu who's putting burn onto it with a Frenzy. You have Secure with Soul and Raijin. And sometimes that's all you need. Those little openings, the really, really good teams exploit those. And if I remember, I actually remember there was a moment where you looked up and you went, oh no, you don't win this against an Ama. <laughs> and like that was the moment where suddenly you see like the floodgates open, the Leviathan surged forward. And it was, you know, fine, okay, I think leading a lot of that, it goes 4-0 and 6, wrong, or sorry, Shinto. Uh, next to him, gets that triple kill. Only gets one more uh, throughout the rest of the game, but 4-3 and 0, you get to see a little bit more from the Raijin, specifically that 14k damage. In a low fight environment, you know, when, when you've got Oath 6-1 and 4 putting up 18k, Benny Q putting up 19k, like, they've had the damage. Uh, the secure maybe not as much there, but the Leviathan's more consistent with that damage turning into actual kills. Yeah, a little bit of sustain. They both had a, a good amount of sustain, but I mean, Ama, a lot of self-sustain, especially with Death's Embrace once it gets to that point. And then Soul also has a good amount of sustain. It's a tough fight to win for the Hounds because a lot of it is 
They have to be quick when you're when you're chasing down an Amaterasu. She provides so much survivability. They had the Emoja, but it just wasn't enough. Uh, overall, really good day by the Levi's. Really clean games. I think game three, if they clean it up a little bit more around that mid game and don't get bullied out as much, I think that game is even one that they could have won. But both positives from both sides. Levi's just taking three one. And you know what? They look good doing it. Even in the, the, the one loss, right? And in that last one, they probably want things to go maybe a little more clean for them, that Phoenix Siege specifically. Before they turn it around the last time, it gets turned around on them. And so things like that maybe is what they're, they're going to be looking forward to. But they came in, at least for the first two games, it was emphatic. And for part of this last game, it was also a pretty emphatic statement. But you don't got to take it from me. We've got wrong you standing by ready for an interview. That's why I got wrong you from the Leviathans here with the first game. First off, congrats on the big win here up against the Hounds. What was the call around fire? First fire giant, 60 minutes. You just walk up and take fire. I mean, who made the, the call to go for that? And then also the call to stick to me. What's going on with you guys at, at that fire giant play? Uh, well, basically, when you have like these kind of comes uh, with Amy and you're against Jamoya, you pretty much don't want to fight. And I think we got the tier one in duo. So Max was either getting gang or something. So he needed to do something, right? So like Max was like, can I do fire? And then we're like, no, we don't have a frenzy. And they're like, I'm here. And they're in right. Because I thought we saw, I think we saw the Thor in the war or something. We're like, okay, let's pull fire. Let's pull the trigger. And then I don't know how we got that fire to be honest. It was pure luck because I was like, wait, are we doing this fire? And then and then it was like, no, no, we're fine, fine, fine. And then we ended up getting it, which Kushinda was aware of that. But yeah, it was just like, to be honest, luck. Yeah, a big, a, a big fire giant for you guys and then catapult you guys in, into a lead. And, and I kind of want to also maybe dial into a little bit later that Phoenix Siege attempt by you guys. You guys get the Phoenix, almost get out of there. Shinto goes down. But y'all make the decision to stick around that fight. I mean, what was the call for, for you, for, for Fino, and for Adapting to stick by and keep it going in that 3v5 fight? Well, it's just like we, we want them to not like farm. And I feel like we were just strong, like Cerberus, um, Adapting, and I might in my terrestrial. So, like they cannot like over chase us. So we can just like just, just vibe in there and just deny some farm, pretty much. And then for you guys now, getting a win today now puts you, I believe, two and one on your record, kind of moving forward for your first few matchups. How's it feel finally getting some big wins under your belt? You know, it's a tough first phase, and now you're coming out strong here in phase two. Yeah, I mean, one more win, and we're going to be like the same wins as last phase, no? So it's going to be like a, that's the deal. Get three wins, and then we celebrate. Get your three wins early, then the rest of the phase kind of goes through. Congrats on your win, Rong. Yeah, I'll let you get back with the team. I'll throw it back over to the desk. And getting the win, honestly, end of the day, something very important, I think, for the Leviathans. Last week, 3-0 against the Dragons, 0-3 against the Ferryman, now 3-1 against the Hounds. So trying to get those wins and very specifically, you know, match, I think, an energy or maybe I should say surpass an energy that they had in Phase 1 and try to level up this Leviathans again on this long, long, long road. Uh, that we are facing towards Worlds. But that's just set number one today. 3-1 again for the Leviathans over the Hounds, if you're just tuning in. It's a set that you're going to want to either go catch the VOD or catch on YouTube.com slash SmiteVOD uh, in the future. Coming up next, it's going to be the Ravens and the Gladiators. One that I'm really excited to see. The Gladiators had an interesting showing, go five games up against the Dragons. The Ravens. Have an interesting showing, but maybe not in the way that they would like overall in week one. Two, zero, three losses, one to the Warriors, one to the Kings. And so trying to turn their luck around as well as for the Gladiators, put some wins on the board. So one inbound, uh, at least in this next set, that I'm very excited to watch. Yeah, I think it's a, a game that, or I guess a set that both of these teams want to take. Because if the Ravens lose this one, they go 0-3, which is not where you want to be, especially in... Yeah. I mean, phase two. If this is phase one, you're 0-3. There's stuff you can build on. But this is phase two. This is the road to worlds. If, you, if you're if you 0-3, that's never a good look. And the Gladiators, they want to avoid going 0-2. And if the Ravens beat them, they actually pass them in the standings, and they would now be the lowest team on the chaos side. So it's a very important game for both of these. You play this team only one other time, and it's very important if you are, you know, trying to get not last, which every team is trying to get not yeah. last, to win these games in your division. Uh, outer divisions don't mean as much for those head-to-heads, but this is a game that both of these teams need. And it's a, this weird balance where it's like almost it's kind of good news that the games you've lost have been in division because like you're going to play them again at some point, so you get another one, you get another shot uh, to try and you know tie head-to-head -head and, yeah. then, and then take some other things. Because the out of division, like if you know, let's I'm going to use the Warriors example. If you win all four of your out of division matches. And then you could you could drop four throughout the regular season in your phase, and you still got the same number as people who have lost those. So the Ravens, this staying in division for them, at first maybe was like, okay, cool, maybe you can glance over. But like you said, it gets more important 
the more the one number gets bigger, mm -hmm. the loss column keeps going up, uh, things are going to get a little stressful for you. So this is the time to try and turn things around. Of course, for the Gladiators, this is the time to try and pick things up and, and see if you can get the ball rolling. So it's going to be fun to watch. Ravens Gladiators will come up next. It's a 3-1 win here for the Leviathans in set number one. That's for myself and inbound. We're going to kick it to a quick break, and then when we get back, it'll be set two. Be round, yeah, you all wanna be round. Round a champion, a champion. I got tons of soul on my true collective ball. Yeah. Famous, so, so famous, number one desirable. I do what I want when I want and how I want it. Leave you with the one in the yeah, air, that's how I roll. I got change to throw, I don't care about no gold. Better, so much better, flipping the credit ball. Always on the show, so they know that I still got it. And I never feel sorry, yeah, to fuck the world. This is me, I'm so wrong. And you all wanna be round Yeah, you all wanna be round Round a champion, a champion This is me, I still on it Cause you all wanna be loved Yeah, you all wanna be loved But a champion, a champion When I hear him come like my fuse and then ba-bum Let us see you later, I'm about to blow this up You can sing my song if you want, I know you want it It's always kinda funny, yeah, cause you I know I'm a superstar in the sky to lead you on Haters gonna hate us, approve of how they love They can bring me down, nah, nah, nah They are jealous of me and my umbrella Yeah, they let me stop This is me, I'm so royal And you all wanna be round Yeah, yeah you all wanna be round Round a champion, a champion Say, you don't understand how I play I am on my way to win you all 